Hi there, welcome to Independence High School. I'm Jeff Horchak, joined by Brett Luckett, and tonight we've got one of the best games you'll see all year in the LaRonger Wolves, Brett, and the Independence Tigers. Now, LaRonger comes in at 5 and 1. They lost last week to Franklinton. Independence, number one in the state, Brett, 6 and 0 over, or 7 and 0. If they win tonight, they come in at 6 and 0, looking sharp. Tell us a little bit about Trey Willing, what he, what the type of uh, problems he'll present to the Independence defense. Well, Jeff, Trey really possesses one of the strongest arms, maybe in the state, most definitely in Tangibahoa. This kid is six foot, 185. He has over 1,100 yards on the season, 10 touchdowns and only four interceptions. That's a great ratio for a high school quarterback. We saw him against Sumner several weeks back. He's a pure passer. He goes in the shotgun. He can do a two-step drop. He's got a gun. He can throw accurate passes and the deep long ball. He will test the secondary of Independence, and they're going to need a test because in two weeks they play Amy. They're going to play another fine quarterback in Lester Ricard. The Ranger has is coached by... Jimmy Morris, a veteran coach, Charles Baglio, another veteran coach. These two coaches combined have 439 wins, a lot of wins. That's just simply amazing, Jeff. I tell you what, LaRange is going to have to play good football tonight because, Jeff, you have to go back nine years ago to 1991, the last time the LaRange Wolves beat the Independence Tigers. But in order for LaRange to win tonight, they got to step up and play great defense and also good offense. If you like to see high school football, you like to see the ball thrown in the air, you need to watch tonight's game. You're going to see a stingy defense in Independence versus a passing, a pass-happy LaRange team. Don't be surprised to see Trey Willie throw 25 passes tonight. This kid can throw the football. He's very talented. He's got some good receivers in Ian Sylvie and Clint Lee. They're a talent. So uh, we're looking forward to a great game. 5-1 and LaRange versus 6-0 and Independence right here on FPTV Channel 17. Jeff Horchak, Brett Luckett, and Francis Scott will bring you the play-by-play. -play. And again, we stress this is an exciting game to watch. This is a game that you want to see. High school football, you rarely see, Brett, you rarely see high school quarterbacks that have the arm strength and accuracy that Trey Willie possesses. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff, this is going to be a great test for the Independence defense tonight. Last week, Trey Willie was 10 of 25, 201 yards and a touchdown. Independence usually gives up around 200 to 50, 250 yards of total defense. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how good those cornerbacks and free safeties and the strong safeties can do for Independence tonight. Right. Trey Willie so far in the season coming into this game has thrown 1,151 yards. He's completed 64 of 130 attempts, four interceptions, and 10 touchdowns. A tremendous talent. He's got good receivers. He's got a good little running back, LaMarcus White, and their defense is uh, they're quick to the ball as well. I think this game could be one of the best games we'll see all year other than maybe the game in two weeks when Independence takes on Amy. Absolutely. And Jeff, you have to realize this. Independence also also has a pretty good offense as well. You have a good running back and senior Jarvis Dunn, who last week had 112 yards and two touchdowns. Justin Adams, math teacher at Independence High School. We'll take a quick break and return with the kickoff between Independence and LaRange. You've got us on FPTV Channel 17. Thank you so much for this day that you've given us for this opportunity to come out this evening. Welcome back to Independence. We're getting set for the kickoff between the Wolves and the Tigers. Independence 6-0 coming into tonight. Number one in the state in 3A. They have not been beaten this year, but this is where the tough part of their schedule starts tonight against LaRanger. Well, Jeff, up until this point, I don't think Independence has really been tested. They've been tested maybe a game or two, but this is going to be a great test tonight against the 5-1 LaRanger Wolves. But in order for Independence to have a good game, Jeff, it's like I said earlier, they're going to have to mix it up tonight. Not only do they have to, go to rely on their rushing attack, they're going to have to rely on our passing attack as well. Because you know Signorelli can't mix it up. He can. Last week against Pearl River, he threw two touchdowns. He passed for 133 yards, completed 9 of 17 passes. He won't throw the football as much as Willie. They're two different quarterbacks. Willie's a passer. Signorelli runs the option. He runs the football, but he throws the short passes, but still can throw the deep ball when he has to. Uh, two different quarterbacks, two totally different teams, but two uh, very good teams, well coached, veteran coaches, and you know what? They know how important this game is for the mid to the end part of the season. Number four, Aaron Lips. Hope to receive for the Royals, number four, Lamarcus White, and number five, Ian Silver. Here we go. Lips kicking it off. And the Wolves have it. Ian Silvey returns it. He's strung back and dropped at about the seven-yard line. Great special teams play by the Tigers on the opening kickoff of the ball game. Ian Silvey absolutely had no place to run on that. Great downfield coverage by Independence. Pinning him down way in the territory on the seems to be at their own eight-yard line. Listen to this crowd. You can barely hear us because of the folks here. We got here about an hour before the game. This place was jam-packed. LaRanger fans, Independence fans, and folks who just want to see a great football game are here tonight. 
to watch the Wolves and the Tigers. It's first down for end of, for the Laranger Wolves, led by Trey Willie, LaMarcus White, Ian Sylvie, Clint Lee, and the rest of the offensive line of Laranger. First down, ball is at the five-yard line. Willie hands it off, and they don't get much on that carry. Good defensive play there by Independence. That was number 99, Lionel Singleton, and also number 54, Rod Higginbotham, on a stop okay. for Independence. It's like a loss of two on the play. Good That's penetration right there by Independence. Now, going into this game, Brett, Independence knows that Trey Willie's a great passer. They know he's going to throw the ball. What they're going to try to do is bring pressure on him, force him to make throws that he doesn't want to make under pressure, and stop their passing game. Really what they want to make him do is go to the running game, but force him to throw the passes that he doesn't want to throw, because if you give him time, he'll pick you apart. Willie now in the shotgun. Rolls right, steps up, throws, and it is caught by number four. That's LaMarcus White across to the 22, and that's a LaRanger first down. I got to say, Jeff, that was a strange formation by LaRanger right there. They ran four of our receivers to your right, but three, one behind each other. And all they did was kind of roll to your right, found his man on a flag route downfield for about a 17-yard gain. Brings up first down for the Wolves. They convert on the pass from Trey Willie to LaMarcus White. Balls at the 22-yard line. Ronaldo Weary in the backfield. Two receivers to the near side, two to the far side. Willie will take it and pitches it to Weary. Goes around the left side, crosses up to about the 27-yard line. So a good pickup there by Weary on the pitch out. And you'll see Willie pitch it out, too. He's a versatile quarterback. He can tuck it and run it, but he likes to throw the ball. Well, that play runs to perfection, Jeff, because they run four bar receivers on that, two split ends and two flankers, but happens that spreads their quarterbacks out further, which gives them a little running lane to go around the side to pick up four or five yards on the carry. Second and five. Second and five for the Wolves. Ball's at the 27-yard line. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side, and Willie now has two backs in the backfield. He's in the shotgun. They hand it to White. He goes around the right side, and he's got a hole across the 40. He's down to the 50, cuts back. And he is dropped at the 39-yard line. First down, and what a draw play. LaMarcus White shows his explosiveness. Jeff, I said it before. It's going to be a good test for Independence tonight. Right now, they're not really passing the test. LaRange is doing a great job spreading the field out. Three wide receivers that time. Handing it off to number four, LaMarcus White, around the right-hand side, picking up some great yards on the play. Another first down for the Wolves. LaMarcus White that time exploding behind a big hole and takes it down to the 39-yard line. Weary in the backfield, two receivers to the near side, two to the far, and Willie under center. They send a man in motion. That's Tobias. They hand it to Tobias. He goes on the left side, and he is dropped. No gain on the play. Good defense by the Tigers there. Number 23 for Independence on the tackle, Donald Conley. Tobias was brought down by number 23, Donald Conley. There's a flag Brett, we the are play. in for a terrific ball game tonight. There's no doubt about it. This game was advertised as being a, a real great game to watch because you see a, a running game of Independence. They've got a trio of running backs in Hubbard, Williams, and Dunn. Then you see the past happy offense of LaRanger. You see it all tonight. Two veteran coaches, great football schools, a lot of fans. I mean, you've got it all here tonight in, in Independence. Holding against the Wolves. That's holding on LaRanger, so pushes the ball back. And like we said last week, Trey Willie threw for 201 yards, and on the other side, Dustin Signorelli passed for 133 yards. So Signorelli had a good day passing the ball. Jarvis Dunn carried the ball 14 times for 114 or 112 yards and two scores. You'll see a lot of Jarvis Dunn tonight. You'll see Gerald Williams along with Neely Hubbard. You'll see Roy Semeca. You'll see Roger Brister on the independent side of the ball. Willie in the shotgun, first and 22. Ball's at the 48-yard line. Two receivers, they hike it way over Willie's head and another flag on the play. Flag on the play. It's gonna be against the Wolves. Illegal procedure. Another penalty in this game. A couple quick penalties. That's not what you want, two consecutive penalties on, a, on this drive. They're putting together an awesome drive. They're killing themselves right now with two penalties on a play. It's now first and 27 for the Wolves from their own 43. Penalty on the Wolves. It's first and 27. They continue to kill themselves with penalties. But with Trey Willie and the arm that he has, anything's possible. A man in the backfield, two receivers to the near side. Willie drops back. He's got some time. Under pressure now, rolls to his right. 
He's going to take it, run it, and he is in big time trouble. Now goes around the left side. He's got room. Look at him go across the 50. He's down to the 40, and he's out of bounds at the 38 yard line. Now Trey Willie shows his mobility. Great run on the play by Trey Willie. The line gave him all day to throw the ball, try to find somebody, but Independence had great coverage on that play. All Willie did was tuck it and start running downfield, picking up close to 18 yards on the play, making it second and about nine for LaRanja. Second and, nine. second and nine for the Wolves and a great scrambling job there by Trey Willie. He was in trouble but picked up some yards and the Wolves keep the drive going. Second and nine balls right at the 39 yard line. Two men in the backfield, Willie in the shotgun, two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. They hike it over Willie's head. He goes back to get it, picks it up and he's dropped back at the 43 yard line. Big defensive tackle there by number 20 of Independence, Colby Payne. Myron Hall, number 13, representative District 62. Vote for Myron Hall, number 13, in District 62. He's a family man, a Democrat, lifelong resident of East Feliciana Parish, married to, former, to the former Lola D. Easley. He has five, five children, and he's been a police juror for 21 years. Vote Myron Hall, number 13, representative District 62. And 27 for the wall. Rings up third and 27 for LaRanja. They hike the ball over Willie's head and they're in trouble. But Willie is under center, has Weary in the backfield. Two receivers to each side. He rolls back, feels some pressure on the backside. Steps up in the pocket, throws. Oh, incomplete to Ian Sylvia. Great effort, but that'll bring up fourth down for the Wolves. Number five, Ian Sylvia. Looked like LaRanja's putting together a good job. Just hurt himself on his couple penalties and also that snap over Trey Willie's head is going to bring a fourth down in a punting situation for LaRanja. Right there you saw the Independence defense. They know they have to put pressure on Willie. They did it there and held him. Trey Willie has to know that he's going to feel pressure tonight. He's not going to be given time just to sit back and throw. He's going to have to make quick decisions, make quick reads, and get the ball out of the pocket quickly because the Tiger defense will be coming after him all night long. So now the Wolves will have to punt on their opening drive of the game. Jarvis Dunn back to return for Independence. That was Sylvie with the punt. Good punt. He goes right out of bounds. And it bounces out right at about the 47-yard line. So a, not a bad punt by Sylvie. And the Tigers have a first down right at the 35-yard line. Now we're going to see the power of football of Independence. They have a lot of backs. Dustin Singh really likes to run the football on the quarterback sneaker. He'll throw the short passes. And as you said, Brett, earlier, distribute the ball well to his different weapons. Roger Brister, Roy Semeca, his three backs. Well, I like to throw that halfback. I mean, sorry, the wide receiver screen a lot. Like I said, they like to throw high percentage passes. So you can look for Signorelli and the Independence Tigers to kind of mix it up on offense. Ball is at the 34-yard line. Signorelli has two backs in the backfield, two receivers to the near side. They hand it to number three, 31. Excuse me, that's Williams. And he fights his way forward. Takes the football about to the 37-yard line. So Gerald Williams on the carry. And the one thing that Independence has on their side is they have home field advantage tonight, and they have three backs that they can shuffle in and out. Gerald Williams, Hubbard, and Dunn, all very capable backs who can carry the ball and pick up big yards for you, keep the offense running, and then help Signorelli out when he wants to distribute the short passes. Brings up second and six, ball at the 37-yard line. Williams in the backfield, two receivers to the near side. They give it to Williams. He goes right up the middle, takes it across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. About three yards shy of the first down. On the tackle for the Rogers, number 58, Justin Trapin. Jarvis Dunchak's back in for Independence, along with number 36, Dan Folks. And Brett, we talked about these two coaches, Jimmy Morris of the Roger and Coach Baglio Jr., Charles Baglio Jr., 439 career wins between the two coaches. You won't find too many coaches combined for that many wins. They go and hand it off to Hubbard. He fights his way, but can't get a lot. Slam back at around the 40. So not much on the carry by Neely Hubbard. Good defensive play there by LaRanger. Number 11, Neely Hubbard. This is going to bring up fourth and one. Brought down. And in this situation, you will almost see Independence punch this ball away. For the Tigers. Brings up fourth and one. 
for Independence. So, you know, we, we talked about the first half right earlier before the game, thinking that this game could be a shootout, and then the second half, one of these two teams would step up defensively and slow the pace of the game down. So far, we've seen defense right out of the gate. Well, this is a good positive test for LeBron. You know, last week he gave him 36 points to Franklinton, so getting him some good positive, good, good positive um, flows right now, stopping Independence on that first drive. Darnell Keith back to punt for the Tigers. And the ball bounces right out about the 35 and then bounces back at about the 20. The ball spotted about the 20 yard line. Good punt there by the Tigers and Independence will take it to the 20 first down. And again, we'll see Trey Willie in this passing attack of LaRanger trying to find the end zone. And we saw them against LaRanger several weeks back. They scored three touchdowns. That was kind of a quiet night for their offense. But they showed in the later stages of the game that they can really score when they need to. Absolutely. They got one of those Florida offenses to kind of score, and they score in, in a quick amount of time. They can score in two minutes or less. That's how high potent their offense is. And one thing about LaRange is they kind of mix it up. They run a, a spread wing team, but also a four wide receiver set as well. Brings up first down. Willie has two backs in the backfield. That's White. And Stevens. They go to Stevens. He fights his way forward, or excuse me, Terrence Walker on the carry. He takes it across the 20, but uh, Terrence Walker seeing some action at running back tonight. The 5'10", 165-pound junior on the carry for the Wolves. Colby Payne and also Kenny Galladora on that stop for Independence. Gain of two will bring up second and eight for the Wolves. Second and eight for LaRanger. They have had trouble. They, well, they actually had a good drive earlier, but they killed themselves on a couple penalties, which kept pushing them back. And against Independence, they cannot, well, you can't no, penalize yourself. You have to make sure line. you play smart ball. Don't, don't jump off sides. Don't get any penalties and just run the offense. And Trey Willie has his hands full tonight against a very stingy Tiger defense. Willie drops back, feels the pressure again, and he is dropped in the backfield again. Trey Willie is not going to have a lot of time to throw tonight. He's got to make quick reads and get the ball out quick because the Tigers are coming after him. Down. On a sack right there was number 54, Rod, Rod Higginbotham, and also number 20, Colby Payne on the, on the assist and right there. It's like we said before, Jeff, Independence's defensive line, they go about 260, 270 across, where LaRange well, is not quite as big on the offensive line, so they're going to have a battle on the offensive line trying to stop Independence tonight. Bring up third. third and 15 and for the Wolves. For the Wolves. The ball's right at the 16-yard line. Now, Willie has... He's going to go into the 10-yard shotgun now. And like you said, the Florida offense, he's in the 10-yard shotgun trying to stay away from that defense. Drops back. Now he feels pressure again. He's having trouble finding a receiver, and he is dropped for the sack by number 68 of Independence. That was Clarence Richardson. And I tell you what, Trey Willie is going to have to get that ball out of the pocket quick because he is not going to have much time tonight. And you can see the Tigers, they're just sending an all-out blitz every play. Independence playing great defense, disrupting the flow of Trey Willie in this early going of the ball game. And they're playing step up to the plate, doing a fantastic job on the defense side of the ball. Ian Sylvie back to punt for the Wolves. Jarvis done back to return for Independence, and he takes it. Ball bounces across to about the 38-yard line, and that's where it'll go. The Tigers will take it at the 38-yard line. No score in this game with 2.23 remaining first quarter. A great one between Independence and LaRanger from Independence, Louisiana. Jeff Horchak, Brett Luckett, and Francis Scott with you for the entire episode of this game for the full four quarters. Tonight's game is brought to you by Pete's Pharmacy. Go see Peter and Peter Jr. Armada in Independence on Railroad Avenue. Pete's Pharmacy's got all your pharmacy needs. Go see Pete at Pete's Pharmacy. Ponchatoula Fitness Center. If you'd like to get into shape and you'd like to go to a local fitness center in a family atmosphere, stop by Ponchatoula Fitness Center at 386-8507. Tigers carried up the middle for not much. By Gerald Williams. Rabondo Builders have been building quality homes in the Florida parishes for over 20 years. If you want to build a house and you have a few financial constraints, hey, feel free to call Rabondo Builders today at 375-2077. And also, Chuck's Field the Dream Sports Cards in the Times Square parking lot behind Papa John's and across from the DMV. Chuck Sports Cards has a full line of sports cards, wax packs, price guides, starting lineups, Pokemon, NASCAR, rookie cards, LSU cards, LSU media guides, and bowl programs. A brand new card shop. It's Chuck's Field of Dreams. You can call them on the phone at 543-0200. Second and eight for the Tigers. Signorelli hands it to Dunn. He bounces it out to the left side. He's got some room. 
fights his way forward and takes him down to about the 34 yard line. Hard run by Dunn. Also, I'd like to thank Sullivan Land Surveying Company. You need to get some land surveyed. You know someone who needs some land surveyed? Call Don Sullivan at Sullivan Land Surveying at 386-2999 today. So Myron Hall, number 13, representative for District 62. Go for Myron Hall. He's a family man, a Democrat, lifelong resident of East Feliciana Parish. He's got five kids, and he was a police juror for 21 years. Vote number 13 for District 62, Myron Hall. We're back to game action. 107 remaining first quarter, no score. The Tigers of Independence have it. They have two men in the backfield, Dunn and Williams. Signorelli under center. He fakes, rolls right, steps up, throws, and the flat is Williams. He's across to the 20. First down, Independence. Good pass right there by Cinderella. Just went until number 31, Jared Williams, was cleared out of the backfield. Just did a little halfback flat pass out on the right hand side, picking up the first down for Independence. Williams is brought down by number 23, Patrick Stevens. First down for the Tigers. Brings up first and 10, ball spotter right at the 21 yard line. Williams and Dunn in the backfield. Signorelli under center. He's got two receivers to the near side Richardson and C. Mecca. They throw to C. Mecca. He makes a cut and is dragged down right at the 21. So not much on the play. Good catch by C. Mecca. C. Mecca, but couldn't get any blocking there. And basically, no yards on that play. Roy Semeca, one of those gutsy little receivers, reminds me of Wayne Corbett. Not a big guy, very gutsy, has good hands and great speed in the open field. Watch out for him, along with Roger Brister and Landry Richardson, three quality receivers for the Tigers. And one thing, Jeff, we just found out tonight that his name is Roy Semeca, not Skamaka, so we'd like to apologize to Roy Semeca for saying Skamaka for the past six weeks. Roy Semeca, we're sorry you're a great player, big guy. Keep it up. That's the end of the first quarter. Your score is 0-0, a great one going on between Independence and LaRondra. And boy, I tell you what, this game was advertised as being a good matchup, and Brett, so far, it has been just that. So far, no points on the bar. Both teams Ladies are playing and the first quarter doing an excellent job right now. Like Independence trying to get something going right now on the LaRondra 21-yard line. And showed their support. And electing him one quarter to go in the Alderman. first half, and no good score between these Tigers of Independence, Anthony. ranked number one in the state, 6-0. In 3A, an 8-3A showdown on the LaRondra Wolves, who are 5-1. Picked up their first loss of the year last week against Franklinton. We were looking for an undefeated matchup tonight between both teams, but Tigers couldn't pull it out against Franklinton. But I tell you what, LaRondra's fighting for that playoff spot with Albany and Franklinton. One of those three teams will shoot in that playoff, that third playoff spot. So LaRondra still has hopes alive that they can make the playoffs. Signorelli on the quarterback. Keeper goes up and takes it down to about the 12-yard line. Great fake on that play, banging it to Nelly Hubbard up the middle, doing the quarterback keeper around the left-hand side, picking up close to nine yards on the carry. It fooled half the LaRondra defense, but LaRondra's cornerback with a great tackle on the play. It'll bring up third and one for the Tigers. Third and one for the Tigers. Royce Semeca checks back in a receiver for Independence. From the Louisville. You've got a lot of fine players on both these teams, LaRondra and Independence. I mean, a lot of these kids are going to be playing college football very soon, so watch out for their names on Saturdays. Third and one. Signorelli gives it to Dunn. He goes right up the middle, fights his way through the Wolf defense and takes it down to about the four-yard line. That should be enough for a Tiger first down. First down for the Tigers. Why not give it to Jarvis Dunn on third and one? Jarvis Dunn has 108 rushes on the air. There's 608 yards, 11 touchdowns. He's averaging close to six yards a carry. He's the second leading scorer in the area as far as points. 72 points he scored this year for the Tigers. He's behind Byron Robertson of St. Thomas, who scored 124 Burst points. Dunn with 12 touchdowns, and last week had 112 yards rushing. Just a real gutsy, tough young back. First and four. Two men in the backfield. They fake, and now Signorelli takes it, and he fights his way to about the goal line. I don't think he got into that play, but he was close. Good tackle right there on LaRondra, number 51. Jonathan James on the stop right there. Holding Signorelli to only about a two-yard gain on a play. I'd like to go back through our sponsors. Chuck's Field of Dreams in the Times Square parking lot behind Papa John's and DMV. Chuck has a, a great selection of sports cards, baseball, basketball, football, rookie cards, LSU media guides, bowl programs. He's got Pokemon cards, NASCAR, the best prices you want. P wax packs from several years back. Call Chuck today if you want sports cards at a good price at 543-0200. And at the goal, and they pitch it to Dunn. He goes around the left side. He'll take it in. Touchdown. His 13th touchdown of the season, Jarvis Dunn.
Jarvis Dunn taking it from two yards out around the left-hand side, picking up some great blocking right there by his tight end. Going in for the score for Independence. Jarvis Dunn, Brett, his 13th score of the year. He takes around the left side, and, you know, he just continues to produce for the Tigers. Great drop, Independence right there. Really mixing it up very well. Throwing some safe Looking routes on, on that drive. Punching it in for six. Lips in to attempt the extra point for the Tigers. And it's good with 10-14 remaining first half. Your score, Independence 7, LaRanger 0. Nothing. Well, we got a little break in the action. I'd like to also thank Sullivan Land Surveying Company. If you need to get some land surveyed or know someone that needs to get some land surveyed, call Don Sullivan at 386-2999 today. First on a one-yard touchdown run by Jarvis Dunn. They take a 7-0 lead, and LaRanger will have another chance and another crack at it. 10-14 remaining first half. Sylvie and LaMarcus White back to return for the Wolves. Aaron Lips to kick it off. He takes it out across the 20. Cuts back and he's dropped right at about the 28 yard line. So pretty good return by Ian Sylvie and the, that's where the Wolves will get it. First and 10, down seven and nothing with 10.05 remaining first half from Independence, Louisiana, the number one team in the state in 3A, trying to go seven and 0. From their own 29 yard line. point in the game, Brett, now the Ranger knows they've got to get their offense going. They don't want to get into a hole and, and, and dig themselves too deep against this Tiger defense, and they'll be in for a long night. Willie has two men in the backfield and a receiver split to either side. He fumbles a snap. He'll take it himself to right up the middle and doesn't get anything. They're having trouble on the snaps. They've already snapped one high over his head, and there they snap it. He fumbles. They're having trouble on the uh, initial snaps. Well, Willie having trouble controlling that ball right there. And against a team Number like Independence, and you had a loss last week, you don't want to start off this Game poorly two, in this ball game this quick. For the Wolves. Brings up second and 10. Ball's right at the 31 yard the line 31 of yard line. Independence. Second down, Willie under center. Two backs in the backfield and a receiver to either side. Got Weary in the back, though he rolls, throws right over the middle, and it's caught by number 10, Brent Willie, across the 40-yard line. First down, Wolves. Good pass right there to, from Trey Willie to number 10, Brent Willie. Brent Willie doing a quick slant on the play, picking up the first down for LaRanja. Great pass on the play by Trey Willie. He's going to have to start throwing those short passes to set up the running game and use the running game to set up the passing game, and then maybe break a big pass here or there to keep the uh, Tiger defense honest. Ball's at the 41-yard line, first down for the Wolves. Willie under center, two backs in the backfield. He's got a receiver to either side. They pitch it to White. Goes around the right side, he has some blocking, and he breaks it across uh, to the 51-yard line, and that looks like it's going to be another first down for LaRanger. A nice run there by LaMarcus White. Number 44, Chris Bonds, and also number four, Donnell Keith on the stop for Independence. Two good plays by the LaRanger offense. A quick pass to Willie and then a nice run by White. Jump starts this LaRanger offense. Ball's at the 49-yard line. First down. Ian Sylvie to the near side of your screen and receiver. Willie to the far side. 
three backs in the backfield. They give it to White, he goes up the middle and just is met by number 22 of the Tigers. Robert Tofield drops him for a loss. By number 22, Robert Good Tofield. penetration right there, but Independence defense, number 22, Robert Tofield on the stop for Independence. Having about a loss of two on a play for LaRondra. Pinning him back second and 12 for LaRondra. Brings up second and 12 for the LaRondra offense. The ball was actually pushed back to about the 49 yard line. So the LaRondra Wolves in a big situation here, needing to convert on second down. Down seven to nothing. Willie drops back, goes to his receiver, Ian Sylvie, and it's incomplete. He threw it a little bit behind and it brings up third down. Down, and Sylvie and running, well, they're running another the quick slant to the left this time. Sylvie was open, just Trey Willie throwing a little bit behind him on that play. Number 92 check into the game on defense for the Tigers. Big Higginbotham checks out. Rod Higginbotham checks out, brings up third and 12 for LaRanger. Willie now in the 10-yard shotgun. He's way back trying to distance himself from the Tiger defense. Third down, big play for the Wolves. And it's incomplete, and he is dropped to the backfield by the blitzing Kenny Galadora. Just came through and laid a hit on Willie, forcing him to get rid of that ball quickly. Well, what happened, Jeff? They were setting up a halfback screen right there because uh, LaRanger's offensive line actually let the defense through on that play, trying to set up the Halfback screen to Terrence Walker, but they sniffed it out, did an excellent job on that play by Independence. So it brings up fourth down for this struggling LaRanger offense in the first half. They trail seven to nothing with 7.46 remaining first half from Independence. Ian Sylvie back to punt, Jarvis Dunn back to return. Dunn is at the 20 yard line. Now he's backed up, good punt by Sylvie, takes it about the 15, he'll take it out. Cuts it around the left side and still on his feet, but's brought back at about the nine. So nothing going good there for Jarvis Dunn. They'll take it at the about the 14 yard line. Robert Good punt by Sylvia and good protection there by the special teams of LaRanger. Great punt by Sylvia on that play. Jarvis Dunn actually had to go back a couple yards to catch that ball. Good tackle by number 64, Robert Remind, and also number 73, Roger James on the play for LaRanger. Pending independence on their own 15 yard line to start this drive from their own 16-yard line. Balls to the 16-yard line, first and 10 for Independence. They lead seven to nothing. They have two receivers to the near side, Brister and Dunn. Nobody in the backfield, two receivers to the far side. Now they send Richardson in motion. They hand it to Richardson. He goes around the left side, cuts back, runs into his own man, and is dropped at about the 17-yard line. So not much on the end around. gained on that play, but Landry Richardson on the end around. The tackle was number 23, Patrick Stevens for LaRanger. Good yeah, tackle by down. Patrick Stevens. By number 30, Ronaldo Weary. Number 23, Patrick Stevens. I got to say, so far, we're halfway through the second quarter. I got to say, excuse me, LaRanger's playing a pretty good job on defense so far tonight. They have. Their offense has struggled, but the defense has kept them in the game. Second and 10 for the Tigers. Ball at the 16 yard line. Two backs in the backfield. That'll be Dunn and Hubbard. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side for Signorelli. Fakes. Got some time now, rolls to his left, he'll have to take it, he's dropped in the backfield, that's a loss. The tackle by number 72 of LaRanger, Donald Usry on the sack. Usry goes 6'3", 285, so he's a big boy. And like we said, Independence's offensive line average is 275, so that's great penetration right there by LaRanger. Brings up third and 13 for the Tigers. So now, LaRanger defensively playing Solid defense, and they're putting the pressure on Dustin Signorelli as the Independence defense did to the quarterback of it. LaRondra. Trey Willie brought the heat to Willie. Both quarterbacks are going to see some pressure tonight. They have to make quick reads and quick decisions. Ball's at the 11. Two men in the backfield, and they give it to Jarvis Dunn. He is stuck. Nothing open there for Jarvis Dunn, and that'll bring up fourth down for the Tigers. They'll have to punt. Jarvis Dunn. That was number 58, Justin Trapin, and also number 51, Jonathan James on the stop for LaRanger, bringing up fourth down for the Independence okay. Tigers. Fourth down. And Independence is going to be forced to punt, and LaRanger should have great field position on this next drive. The punter, number 14, Dustin Signorelli. Quick to receive. Quarterback Dustin Rose. Signorelli will be back to punt now. Patrick Stevens. And Patrick Stevens back to return for the Wolves at the 46-yard line. 
5.23 remaining first half. Independence with a 7-0 lead. Bounces up. Takes a Tiger bounce and bounces down to about the 43-yard line. A good punt there by Dustin Cinderella. Sets it up first and 10 at the 43-yard line for the Ranger. And got to get something going before the half. From their own 43 yard I'd like to run through our sponsors again for tonight's football game. Wasn't for our sponsors, we wouldn't be able to bring you high school football at its best. Ponchatoula Fitness Center, a family run fitness center. If you like to go to a family center and uh, you're intimidated by a lot of big muscle bound people, hey, Ponchatoula Fitness is the place to be. You can call them on the phone at 386 8507 or you can stop by and see them at 1330 Highway 51 in Ponchatoula. Also, Rabondo Builders. They've been building quality homes in the Florida parishes for over 20 years. If you want to build a house, you have some have some financial problems, feel free to call Rabondo Builders. They can work it out with you. Call them on the phone today at 375-2077. Willie hands it up the middle. Big hole for number nine, Shermaine Arline on the carry up to the 50-yard line for the Wolves. Also, Chuck's Field and Dream Sports Cars in the Times Square parking lot behind Papa John's and the DMV. Chuck's Sports Cars has a full line of sports cars, large selection of wax packs, basketball, football, baseball, rookie cards, sports cards, supplies, price guides, starting lineups, Pokemon, NASCAR, the list goes on, LSU cards, media guides, bowl programs. Chuck has the best prices in sports cards today in the area. Call them on the phone at 543-0200 today. Second and three for the Wolves. And it's a white, pitch it out, he goes around the right side, he's dropped at the 50 yard line. Great tackle by number four of Independence, Darnell Keith on the pop. I also like to thank Sullivan Land Surveying. If you need to get some land surveyed or know someone who knows, call Don Sullivan at Sullivan Land Surveying at 386-2999 today. Willie's got time, he's under pressure, rolls right, throws, and it's intercepted, nearly intercepted by Kobe Payne. That was a dangerous pass right there, but Trey Willie trying to gun it in right there. He had number five in Silver open. Excuse me, he had number 15, Clint Lee open, and just kind of forced it in there, it was almost picked off. Trey Willie has felt pressure from every direction tonight by this Tiger defense and he's had to get rid of the ball quickly and right there that's what the Tigers want to do is force him to make the throws he doesn't want to make under pressure and he almost was intercepted there by Kobe Payne but Payne couldn't hold on brings up fourth down the Wolves, five, and the Wolves will have to punt so we will punt Chad and Alexander. Chad Alexander the speedster back to return for the Tigers right at about the 19 yard line good punt Alexander takes it at about the 16 brings it out Still on his feet, looking Alexander. for blockers, and he's out to about the 20 to the sideline, cuts back, and Alexander brings it down to about the 31-yard line, so a nifty return there by Chad Alexander. Alexander brought down by number 53, Justin Smith. Good run by Alexander, number 53, Justin Smith on the tackle for LaRanja. Independence is going to have it on a 30-yard line with 327 left to go in his first half. like to thank Sullivan Land Surveying Company. If you need to get your land surveyed, call Don Sullivan at 386-2999. I know this guy personally. He's a great guy. He'll set you up. First and 10 for the Tigers. Two men in the backfield. They give it to Williams, and he fights his way but can't get anything. Good tackle there by number 30 of the Wolves. Ronaldo Weary drops Williams. He was brought down Independence, in order for them to Williams. maybe get something going here, they're going to have to mix it up like they've been doing in the previous games and even okay. in the first quarter because they get the ball the second half. So if they get yeah. something going right the before halftime, that's something positive going to in the second the half. Well, LaRonger's defense has played solid tonight. It's just their offense has struggled. They haven't been able to string together one solid drive. Brings up second and ten, balls at the 30. Two backs in the backfield and a receiver to the near side. They pitch it out to Dunn. He goes around the left side. Needs some blocking, is strung out and dropped right at the 30. Great tackle there by number 88 of LaRanja. Chris Popolis just dropped Dunn and they strung Jarvis out. They don't want to let him get outside. Good job by the Wolf defense. That brings up third and 10 for the Tigers. Great job right there with Chris Populus. 
waiting on right on Dunn to come around right trying to go around right the left hand side but Populous kind of read the play came up left his man made the stop for no gain independence two backs in the backfield two receivers to the near side Williams and Hubbard Dunn and Williams in the backfield Signorelli rolls right Steps up, throws, and he's got a man. It's caught by Landry Richardson. He's across to the 46-yard line. First down, Independence. First down for the Tigers. That's where it's going to really hurt you if you're LaRondra. He's a great, he's a great a guy who can roll out and find his guys. If you give him enough time, he'll pick you apart. Showing him right there, good, good throw right there to number 21. Landry Richardson picking up the first down for Independence. Ball spotted at the Tigers, 46. Under two minutes remaining, first half, Independence with a 7-0 lead. They have the football right at the 46-yard line and a first down. No men in the backfield. Two receivers to the near side, two to the far side. St. Really, now they send Richardson in motion. St. Really takes it up the middle, and he brings it across the 50 to about the 51-yard line. Brings up second and 10 on the quarterback keeper by Dustin Signorelli. The hard-nosed senior quarterback. Time out. And a timeout on the field called by the LaRondra Wolves. So with 150 remaining in the first half, your score is Independence 7, LaRondra 0. Jeff Horchak, Brett Luckett, and Francis Scott with you for all four solid quarters. And then after the game, we'll try to flag down the winning coach and ask him a few questions about the game, what he thought, and his feelings on the season. Whether it's Coach Morris or Coach Baglio, we'll have them for you right after the game on the post-game show. This is the Bill Hood Game of the Week on Florida Paris Television. We have a lot of great sponsors. Bill Hood sponsors this game and every game on FPTV, but this is the game of the week, the featured game. Supposed to be the most competitive game, and so far it has been a very competitive game here tonight. As the Tigers have uh, shown their ability to move the football against a pretty good LaRanger defense, and their defense has stopped this pass-happy LaRanger offense. This game is brought to you by Independence Maya really Powell. passing the test Independent right now, playing some great defense. LaRanger is having a little trouble getting drives Maya together. Powell. It seems like they're getting some good drives downfield, but they're kind of stalling out on Blue penalties and also bad Maya exchanges Maya from the center to the quarterback. LaRanger is definitely going to have to work on that come the second half. Second down and six for the Tigers from midfield. Richardson in motion, two backs in the backfield. They give it to Hubbard, and he has a huge hole. He's across to the, near the 35-yard line. Neely Hubbard running with authority. And the Tigers thought it was a little late hit there, but they don't get the call. But Neely Hubbard just explodes through the hole and shows you his ability to run the football with power. Well, great job, Independence. Offensive line opening up a hole, running right behind number 64, Aaron Lips. He opened up a huge hole for Neely Hubbard to run first behind, down, picking up the first the down for Independence. That run by Hubbard was a for, for a Hubbard. first down, and you'll see a lot more of Neely Hubbard in the future. He's only a sophomore. At the rear of 37. He's 5 foot 10, 190 pound fullback, and he runs with authority. First and 10, done in the backfield, two receivers to the far side. Signorelli fakes, now rolls left, has some time, steps up, throws, Signorelli and is caught by Roy Semeca. What a catch by Roy Semeca. And that's enough for a first down. Number 16 with the reception. Nice sliding grab by Roy Semeca. And another first down for the Tigers. They're trying to find the end zone again with under a minute 35 remaining in the first half. First trying to pad their lead. The and they know they're going to need some points tonight if they want to hold off LaRanger because this team, you know, just because they haven't scored yet doesn't mean they're not going to score. In the second half, they came alive against Sumner several weeks ago, scored three quick it's touchdowns. Really so they have the three. ability to score. You want to make sure you get up on them by as many points as you can. Good pass right there, but signal really to Landry Richardson on the play, picking up close to seven line. yards on the play. Just doing a quick two-step drop, hitting Richardson on the left-hand side, picking up seven yards. Second and three. From the Second and three for the Tigers at the 20 yard line. Hubbard and Dunn in the backfield. Brister and Richardson to the near side at receiver. Signorelli throws to Brister. Great catch. Fights his way forward across to about the 18 yard line. And Roger Brister, that tall, lanky body that he has, he stretched it all out to make the catch. He's 6'1, 150 pounds. Used all that 6'1 frame to grab the ball and stretch for the extra inches. Timeout on the field by Independence. 
With 105 remaining in the first half, they lead 7 0. They're on an impressive drive right, right at the 19 yard line currently. Brett, so far, give us a synopsis on the first half. Well, so far, I think both teams are playing an excellent ball game right now. The penalties are being held to, to a minimum. The Ronda, like I said, two costly penalties early in the ball game, but also almost two costly turnovers as well. The center and the quarterback having a little trouble in exchange. Like but overall, like I said, it's been a pretty well good played ball game so far. Stand. The only score in the game was on a one-yard run by Independence tailback Jarvis Dunn. And that's been the only scoring so far in this first half, but the Tigers right now are on a drive. They have a little over a minute remaining, and they're trying to get a little bigger lead before the half because this LaRanger offense can all of a sudden come alive. You just never know. Trey Willie starts connecting on a few passes. They get LaMarcus White running, and all of a sudden you've got a ball game. So the Wolves, or the Tigers, know that no lead is safe against this Trey Willie-led offense of LaRanger. Third and two, two backs in the backfield. Signorelli on the quarterback. Keeper takes it up the middle, continues to break tackles. He's across the 10 to about the nine-yard line. And that should be enough for another Tiger first down. Down by Tackle number, number 72, Donald Isry for LaRange on the stop. Independence does have the first down. You're looking first at first and goal for Independence. First and goal from the nine yard line. Signal out of stop, complete. Roy Semeca with the catch. Another big play by Roy Semeca, and he shoved that about shy of about the three yard line. So. Right now is where LaRondra has got to stiffen up on defense because the, the Tigers have got so many weapons on the field at this point. Well, they have a lot of weapons, and I'll tell you what, Signorelli, as you and I know, is dangerous when he just takes those two-step drops because that gives him enough time to find Cermak out in the flat. 48.2 seconds officially left in the game clock. 7 to nothing. Independence with the lead, but they are right in the red zone now trying to punch it in before halftime. And go up two scores. Roger Brister just checking into the game for the Tigers at receiver, and he's a big, tall receiver. They can use him in the corner of the end zone. They like to loft the ball up in the corner of the end zone and let Roger go up for it. He's very effective when they do that. Well, we've seen in the past couple of weeks, they like to run that fade route to him, and he knows he's tall enough to go up and get it. First, Signorelli takes it himself up the middle. Touchdown, Tiger. On the one-yard quarterback sneaker, Signorelli takes it in. Good job at Independence offensive line to open a hole for Dustin sitting around the run behind, sneaking it in from two yards out for the touchdown Independence. Tigers try to convert on the extra point and go up 14 to nothing with about 45 seconds left Tigers, in the first half. The point after, number 64, Aaron, Aaron lifts into attempt. And it's up, so Aaron Lips nails the extra point and your score with 45.2 seconds left in the first half is Independence 14, LaRanger 0. You're watching a great ball game here from Independence, Louisiana. 45 seconds is a lot of time for uh, an offense like LaRanger's to score. I mean, Trey Willie doesn't need but a couple passes and he can get his team on their first scoring drive of the game. I believe that is plenty of time, but I also believe LaRanger's going to have to have a nice return on his kickoff, maybe at around their own 25, 30-yard line. As you said, LaRanja can hit the quick one in less than a minute, couple, two minutes. So definitely they're going to have to um, throw the ball, make some good decisions, Trey Willie. They had, first, Jeff, they had to get a good exchange Stop from center to quarterback. The right, they've had the trouble uh, on the exchanges. Pike's going over uh, uh, Willie's head, and they've had a couple uh, bobbled snaps. So they've got to snap the ball well and make sure the exchange is firm before they can get the ball downfield to their receivers and respective offensive players. Ian Sylvie and LaMarcus White back to return for the Wolves. And number four, Darnell Keith to kick it off for the Tigers. Sylvie will take it right out about the 18-yard line. Has some blocking out front, takes it up and crosses the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Pretty good return by Sylvie. Decent field position for LaRanger. Number 99, 38, excuse me, Jeff, go ahead. 38 seconds left. He lost a few seconds in that play, but can number Trey Willie do it? That's the key. I believe he can. I think the Rangers offensive line definitely got to give him about three to four seconds to try and find somebody because you know they do that eight to ten yard shotgun. So that right there in itself gives him enough time to try and find someone 15 to 20 yards downfield. 
He's got to make his check downs quick, make his reads quick, and get the ball out of the pocket because the Tigers, they're blitzing from every direction on every play. First and 10, balls at the 39-yard line. Willie under center. He's got two men in the backfield. They pitch it to White. He goes around the right side, has some lead blockers, and he crosses the 40-yard line. About four yards shy of the first down. So a decent run there, but they've got, they're going to have to throw the ball now because you're about 25 seconds now. You can't keep running the ball. Clock is not stopping. So now they might, clock stops now at 23 seconds. They're going to need at least one big pass play here. And the Wolves will take a timeout to talk it over. Very shocking to see a run play on that situation. You got 43 seconds left in half. You come out and you run the ball. It's surprising to me because you know in high school football, if you go down field and you pick up the first down, the clock will stop giving your offense just enough time to reset and do the next play. The next play for the Wolves will be second down and four yards to go. But they're going to have to throw the ball here. 23.1 seconds left. They're going to need one nice deep pass and to set up a chance at the end zone. Or at least get some points on this drive because if they go down 14 to nothing. But, you know, we're really two scores even at halftime is still well within the Wolves' Ladies reach with the offense that they have. But you have to be impressed tonight by the Tiger defense system. because they've Strive been able to, to the health and educational needs present a barrier to this LaRanger offense and not allow them to consistently the throw the ball like they like to. Certified athletic trainers and physical well, we knew coming into this game this was going to be a good event. test for Independence's defense because LaRanger averages well over 300 yards a game, but Independence's defense gives up under 300 yards a game. So right now, Independence definitely passing the test. Second and... Six, Willie the shotgun, rolls right, steps up, throws. He's got Sylvie. He was Willie shy of the first down, I believe. Complete. He was about two, five, maybe a foot in front of the first down marker. I'm not sure he got that. It looked like he ran out in front of the first down marker. But we'll see. And yeah, he was shy. If he'd gone about two steps farther downfield, he would have had the really first down. So it brings up third down, and one. Third and, one. and now you, you have to throw the football. I mean, you're at the 49-yard line. It's 18 seconds left. It's third and one. You have to throw it. Well, he had to throw it right there in the situation because he had number 99, Lionel Singleton, bearing down his face. So he had to hit Sylvia in the flat. Well, you're right there. One yard short of the first down, so he had to pick up something right here. Willie steps up, throws over the middle. It's incomplete really out of the arms of Terrence Walker. And that's going to do it for the first half. The incomplete. Wolves will have to punt. And it looks as if it'll be a 14 to nothing independence lead at halftime. The uh, Wolves there just couldn't convert a key third down. Well, I'll tell you what, Joe, this has got to give independence great. Some good positive right here going into the second half. As you know, they get the ball starting the second half up 14 nothing right now. It kind of puts a spin on things for LaRanja. They got to kind of get together at halftime discuss what they're doing wrong and come back in the second half and have, have a strong game. I'd like to run through our sponsors again before the half to let you know who has sponsored this football game. Chuck's Field of Dreams sports cards in the Times Square Shopping Center. We want to thank Chuck for sponsoring the game. He has a great selection of sports cards, Pokemon cards, NASCAR, and he's got LSU cards, media guides, bowl programs. He's got a little bit of everything. Stop by Chuck's Field of Dreams today in the Times Square Shopping Center across from the Department of Motor Vehicles or call him on the phone at 543-0200. Also, Rabondo Builders. They've been building quality homes in the Florida parishes for over 20 years. If you need a nice home built and you're, you, know, you have some financial constraints, feel free to call Rabondo Builders today at 375-2077. And also, Ponchatoula Fitness Center, a good family atmosphere to work out. If you'd like to work out over the wintertime and get ready for summer, stop by Ponchatoula Fitness Center today at 1330 Highway 51 across from the old Cape Tangy and down from North Oaks Hospital or call them on the telephone at 386-8507. And we'd also like to thank Myron Hall, number 14, vote for him. Number 13, District 62, he's a family man, a Democrat, and he's been a police juror for over 21 years. Myron Hall, vote for him. District 62, Tigers. number 13. I'd also like to thank Sullivan Land Surveying Company. If you need to get some land surveyed, I know someone who does, call Don Sullivan today at 386-2999. I know he's a great guy, he'll hook you up. 2.6 seconds remaining first half, the Tigers will just kneel it and go into the locker room up 14 to nothing. And remember, after this game's over, we'll have a post-game show with the winning coach, so you don't want to miss that. And that's the half. The score is 14 to nothing. Independence with the lead. We'll take a quick break and return with the second half of action here from Independence High School. You've got us on Florida Paris Television, Channel 17.
Welcome back to the second half here at Independence High School as the Wolves trail the Tigers 14 to nothing. Independence has the ball to start off the second half. Dustin Signorelli at quarterback. Two men in the backfield, two receivers to your near side. Here we go. You give it to Dunn. He shakes and bakes. Goes across the 20 to about the 23. Brought down. By number 82. Tiger defense has kept the, the LaRanger offense in check tonight so far, and they've basically shut out LaRanger. So, but there's two full quarters to go in this ball game. It's not over yet. We'll see how the Wolves respond to the 14 to nothing deficit at halftime. From their 23 yard line. Ball to the 23 yard line. Signorelli is going to have two men in the backfield. Actually, one man in the backfield. That's going to be Jarvis Dunn, the lone back, and then he has. Roy Semeca to his near side and Richardson to the far side. He steps up and he's in pressure, under pressure. He fumbles the football. It's on the field and I believe LaRondra has recovered. They have. The Wolves have stripped the football and recovered the ball at the 10 yard line. What a turn of events. Well, Jeff, that was number 64. Robert remind on the strip for LaRondra. Big play to start the second half. LaRondra definitely can get something going right here. Plenty of time left in this ball game to get something going. That's exactly what the Wolves needed, and they got it on a turnover down deep in Tiger, or excuse me, their territory. So I tell you what, right now this is Independence's or LaRondra's, excuse me, his best chance of scoring. They're way down the field. They just forced a turnover. That's the way to start the second half. Absolutely, great play by the LaRondra defense. Trey Willie steps to the line. He has Lamarcus White in the backfield with, and Ian Sylvie to his near side. He's got receiver Clint Lee to the far side and he's also got number 30 Ronaldo Weary in the backfield so White and Weary in the backfield it's first down the ball is spotted right at the 13 yard line in terrific field position for the Wolves who hail from La Roger, Louisiana coming with a 5-1 record they lost to Franklinton last week but the game is on the line right here two men in the backfield the receiver splits either side Willie fakes the pitch rolls right Steps up, throws, and it's caught by Joseph Tobias. But my goodness, sweet sassy molassy, Darnell Keith with a hit. Monstrous hit by Darnell Keith right there. But good job by number three, Joseph Tobias. Hold on to that ball for LaRonda, picking up close to four yards on a play. Darnell Keith with a hit. My goodness, where'd he come from? A standing hit looking like Sammy Knight on the play right there. From the eight yard line. Eight yard line, second and six for the Wolves. Willie has White and Weary in the backfield. He's got Sylvie to the near side, Lee to the far side. Goes in the corner of the end zone to Sylvie. Incomplete. He had the ball in his hands in the corner of the end zone. Couldn't hold on. But that brings up third down and good coverage by the Tigers. That was number one, Chad Alexander, for the coverage on Independence. LaRondra trying to do a quick fade route down the left-hand side of the field. Ian Sylvie going up for it. Just, he had, it looks like he had his hands, but just lost concentration and dropped it. Yeah, he's got to make those catches. The ball was in his hands, but like you said, Chad Alexander had good coverage and broke up the pass. It brings up third and six. Balls at the eight-yard line. White in the backfield with Weary. Sylvie to the near side. Lee to the far side. They pitch it out to White. He's got a hole. He's down the sideline, and he is... Stopped shy of the goal line. I believe he was at the two-yard line. Now they throw a flag at the last second. Late hit. It could be a late hit against Independence. Not a smart penalty right there. That's going to be a flag on the Independence Tigers for late hit. So brings up first down at the two-yard line for LaRondra. And I tell you what, if they can score right here and cut this lead in half, we've got a football game that uh, we expected prior to the game. We expected this. We've got a game. LaRondra definitely saw some good emotion right here in this early going in the second half. I tell you what, Jeff, they need to definitely try and punch it into the end zone right here. First down, they have Weary in the backfield, and 
And there goes Trey Willie on a quarterback keeper touchdown, LaRonger. Trey Willie on the one yard quarterback keeper scores. And it's 14 to six. Now the Wolves will kick the extra point. And I tell you what, that was a big motivation, uh, momentum switcher. You can see it on the sideline. The LaRonger fans, the team now say, hey, we're in this ball game. Ian Sylvie in to kick the extra point. In to kick the point after number five, Ian Sylvie. <laughs> Snap is down, the kick is up, and your score with 10-13 remaining score, in the third quarter is Rogers Independence 14, LaRogers 7. seven. Ladies and gentlemen. Give credit to Jeff, give credit to LaRogers defense. Boston that turnover deep in Independence's territory. And also a good play right there by Trey Willie on the quarterback keeper. LaRonja's off at the line, opened up a great hole, scoring from one yard out for LaRonja, cutting the deficit 14 to 7. Your half of the 50-50 raffle is $336. That's number 577-860. It's a blue ticket. Five seven seven eight six zero. Please get out your fifty fifty raffle tickets. Crazy. We're looking for number five seven so seven. So now eight, Independence six, gets zero. the football back after a turnover, and the Ranger fans tickets. were going nuts over there after that touchdown run by Trey Willie. I tell you what, the fans—they got great fan support. That whole side's covered with red and black. So I tell you what. The Roger has come to play tonight. They forced a turnover, and that's what you want to do in the second half when you're down two scores. Come in, make a stop, maybe force a turnover and score on it. And the Roger did that. We've got a 14 to 7 ball game. Sylvie kicking Jarvis off. Jarvis Dunn back to receive for the Tigers. He's at about the three yard line. That's a good, good, good Woo! kick Sylvie's by Sylvie. Kick. And the Wolves will kick it back time. and send the Tigers to the 20-yard line. And now again, another good kick by Sylvie. The momentum the is really switching in favor of LaRonger. Hey, what, Jeff? LaRonger's fans here are jacked Ladies right now. Gentlemen, once again, please look at your raffle tickets. Your 50% is $336. Ticket number 57860. Well, let's see how good LaRonger can play defense five, right here on this seven, next year. Seven, eight, we'll see if the... Uh, Tigers can respond now after giving up the touchdown off of the turnover. First and ten, Signorelli has two men in the backfield. He gives it to William or Hubbard, and he is just stuck at the line. And the LaRonja defense, again, not allowing any running. And, man, you talk about a quick momentum swing. I mean, this game has turned from one side to the other in a matter of seconds. When it pitched, looks like they went from fast to slow. I'll tell you what, LaRonja's riding a high right now. That was number 64, Robert Remine on a stop for LaRonja. No gain on the play for Independence, bringing up second and 10. This is a very critical drive for the Tigers at this point because of the momentum switch. They've given up a touchdown that quick. LaRondra scored that quick, so they need to put together a drive here. Second and 10, Signor has two men in the back of the game. It's done. He finds a hole right up the middle, Go breaks in the open field. The He's wrapped up and brought down shy of the 40-yard line. First down, and that's what you do. You give it to your trusty back, Jarvis Dunn. He bails you out. Give credit to the offensive line. They open up a good hole. But Jarvis starting to run behind, picking up the first down for Independence. A gain of about 14 on a play. I think this point in the game, you're going to see a lot, a big dose of Jarvis done with Hubbard and Williams because now they want to take over this game. They know they've, they've cut their lead. The lead's been cut to seven. They want to milk the clock now. They don't want to get into a scoring battle with this LaRonja ball club. Signorelli gives it back to Dunn, and he is dropped in the backfield for a loss. Tackle by number 72 of LaRonja, Donald Ussery, and he's been in the backfield several times tonight. Well, he goes 6'3", 285. He's a big boy. He's expecting to be in a backfield a lot during the rest of this game. Ladies and gentlemen, Brings up second and nine for the, the Tigers. Ticket, you have five minutes to come to the press box, and we will draw, or we will draw another ticket. Five seven seven eight six zero. You have five minutes to claim your prize. Signorelli drops back, throws, and it's got he's got Richardson down the left sideline. He moves his way down the field, turns it up field, and he's shy of the 50-yard line. Another first down for the Tigers to Landry Richardson. Good high percentage pass right there. As we said, Signorelli is most dangerous when he takes that two-step drop. He can get out there really quick in a flat, pick it up the first down for Independence. Now the tempo of this game is really picking up in this third quarter. We, we saw kind of a slow first half, a lot of defense, not a lot of scoring, but the tempo is definitely 
kicked up a couple notches in this third quarter as the Ranger forced a turnover, recovered the turnover, scored the touchdown. Now the Wolves try, or the Tigers trying to counter that. First down, Richardson in motion, two backs in the backfield. Signorelli gives it to Big Hubbard. He's tripped up in the backfield and dropped. Not much on that run. He's brought down by number 72. Again, that's number 11, Donald Ussery. We'll give carry. credit right there to number 30, Ronaldo Weary for LaRondra, tripping him up and allowing number 72 to come through and make that tackle. Lost the one for independence. Donald Ussery is really starting to penetrate now through that independence offensive May line. It's causing trouble and tripping up the backs line. of the Please backfield. Take your ticket, 5 7 7 8 6 0. Brings up second and 11 for the Tigers. The ball at the 47 yard line. Hubbard and Dunn in the backfield. They pitch it to Dunn. He goes around the right side, doesn't have a lot of block. He cuts it back and he breaks it downfield. Now across the 50, he's got open field and he is tackled by number 88 of LaRanger. That's Chris Popolis. Takes it down to about the 44 yard line, but a good run by Jarvis Dunn. Had to switch sides. Looking like Barry Sanders there cutting back. Jarvis Dunn showing some excellent moves when I play, but a great open field tackle right there by Chris Popolis. Saving a potential touchdown right there. So good tackle by Chris on that play. It's funny how Jarvis Dunn switches directions so quick. I mean, he turned upfield and then cut back and went right, right around the other side of the field. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent to a guy named Barry Sanders. He did that many times. Brings up third and six for the Tigers. Ball at the 47-yard line. Two men in the backfield. Signorelli fakes to Dunn, rolls right. He's under extreme pressure, and he can't get rid of it. Still on his feet, he's dragged back, and the ball's taken away! Oh, my goodness! It is stripped by number 64, Robert Romine. And he took the ball away from Signorelli. What a play, an aggressive, gutsy play by Romine, and another turnover. Jeff, I'm surprised the ref didn't blow the whistle on that play because it looked like they were tangled up for about three or four seconds. Usually the refs would throw the whistle. In this case, they didn't, forcing that turnover for LaRanger. Look at the sideline of LaRanger. They are hysterical. They forced two turnovers here in about the last four minutes, and that's another big play, and they have the ball at the 19-yard line. Unbelievable, Brett. This game has totally turned directions in the third quarter. Well, Jeff, right at halftime, I was talking to former LaRanger defensive end Kevin Lee. He didn't expect a good momentum switch going into the second half. And I'll tell you what, he's been right so far. First and 10, ball to 20. They hand it to number 22. He bangs his way forward. That's Walker on the carry. He's brought down at the 15-yard line. Man, LaRanger has come up with two big turnovers. And right there, going back to that play, Signorelli looked like he was in big trouble. He was being brought back, but he was still on his feet. And then Romine just strips the ball away, takes it, and runs down the field. I mean, that's a that's a real heads-up play for a defensive player. Well, normally, when two players are tied up like yeah, that, yeah. you can't you can't go anywhere. You, normally, like I said, the refs would usually throw the whiff whistle, but in this case, they didn't, and they had enough time for number 64, Robert Romine, to strip that ball, force a turnover, setting up great field position for Laranja. Unbelievable play there, and the, t the Wolves have it again off of a turnover at the 20-yard line. Timeout called on the field, but you know. We talk about games and it looked like Independence was in control at the half, up 14 and nothing, but all of a sudden you have two turnovers and the, the whole scenario of the ball game has changed. And that's what's happened tonight Official is the timeout. Wolves have scored on a turnover and they just ripped the ball away, took it back, and they have it again in an official timeout on the field. With 6-12 left in the third quarter, it's Independence 14, LaRondra 7. LaRondra has it on Independence's 25-yard line. Trey Willie rolls out to his right. He's back to pass. He's under a lot of pressure. He's going to keep it rolling to his left. He finds plenty of running room on the left-hand side. Willie, run out of bounds. It looks eight, like he did pick up the eight. first down for LaRondra. Being chased right there by number 44, Chris Bonds. That was a big play for LaRanja, scrambling quarterback there. He did a good job of getting away from the defensive uh, defensive lineman. I'll tell you what, Francis, looks like the momentum has shifted in this second half. The momentum has definitely shifted. LaRanja taking the ball back right there in Independence territory. It, uh, it could get ugly for Independence right now. Well, LaRanja has a first and goal in their Independence's eight-yard line. Trey Willie's on the center, two backs in the backfield. He's going to run a, a counter handoff to number three, Joseph number Tobias, three, on the play. And he's going to be tackled game. by a host of Independence Tigers, down, taking it down to a pierce of here on a five-yard line, bringing up second goal for LaRanja. And number eight, Sam Williams. Well, LaRanja's definitely came back in the second half, and they have stunned Independence. They stunned this crowd. They're doing really well coming back. Uh, two turnovers like that, it's, it's getting pretty good. 
LaRonja has a really high powered offense, so you don't expect it to be shut down too long. We will bring up second goal for LaRonja. Trey Willie on the center has receivers to his left and right, two backs in the backfield. He fakes the handoff, fakes the pitch, and he's going to be stacked up at the line of scrimmage by a host of Tackle Independence of Tigers. Tigers. Looks like he picked up maybe close to one, maybe two yards on the play, bringing up third and goal for LaRonja. One yard gain on the keeper by Willie. Well, LaRonja really third needs to punch this ball in right now. They, they score line. right now, tie this ball game up. They, uh, they've really broke the back of Independence. They get the ball back and maybe score another one. They can, uh, they can really beat this undefeated season. Brings up third and three. Here we go. Willie under center. He's got two men in the backfield and a receiver to either side. His two stud receivers in the game. He throws over the middle. Touchdown! Touchdown at number 15, Clint Lee. And he shakes his head like, hey, we're the man, we're the man, we're the team, we're back in the ball game, baby, 14 to 13. And that shows you how turnovers can really change the scenario of a game. We got a 14-13 game. LaRondre is in this football game by all means. Just a great pass by Trey Willie right there, hitting number 15, Clint Lee, on a quick slant over the right-hand side, punching it in for LaRondre. Ian Sylvia into attempt the extra point. I tell you what, it looked as if the game was getting out of hand, but the Wolves have just Jump right back in off two big turnovers. Extra points good, and your score with 4.37 remaining third period is Independence 14, LaRonja 14. Don't get up at all because you are watching the best game of the week. This is the game of the week. LaRonja and Independence, Jeff Horchek, Brett Luck, and Francis Scott, the whole crew's here. We're pumped, primed, and ready for action, and boy, we're getting action as the Wolves have just forced two turnovers. Unbelievable dramatic fashion, and the LaRonja sideline is irate. They're excited, they're pumped. The fans are pumped, the coaches are pumped. The play I mean, this is unbelievable. This is football. Well, Jeff, let me tell you, this is one of the one of the biggest rivalries in Independence. Uh, Independence ain't meets a big rivalry, but Independence and Ronja has always been a big rivalry. And to come into Independence and play this well against a, an undefeated team, it's saying a lot about this LaRonja ball club. It is. The Wolves uh, have not died. You know, they can come out and die, but the second half they've come alive and they've jumped themselves right, actually climbed right back into the ball game, tie game. And this game is anybody's game at this point with 4.37 remaining third quarter. Jarvis done back to return for the Tigers and they'll take it to the 20-yard line. Rolls into the end zone. No now, touchback. this week, the uh, LaRonja Wolves got five to votes to be ranked in the, in the top uh, ten. Line. So, I mean, they got some votes. I think a good performance tonight would even give them a few more votes because they played hard tonight. Remember the last time LaRonja defeated Independence was back in 91, so it's been nearly 10 years since the Wolves have defeated Independence. Uh, I guess tonight would be a better night, the best night to do it. Still plenty of time in this ball game, Jeff. Anything can happen. Signorelli drops back on first down throws. Landry Richardson incomplete. Incomplete. Intended for Landry Richardson. Independence, like we said, has won eight consecutive times over the Ranger. The They've outscored the Wolves 310 to 61. So big margin there tonight. They're locked at 14. So they're at, the average score between these two teams, if you had to take the points and average the score, it's been 38 to 8 in favor of Independence. Tonight, you're seeing a, a real a battle. It's not that way at all. Second and 10, Richardson in motion. They decide to keep it. There's Signorelli. He runs it around the left side, and he is stuffed. Maybe got a yard or two, but not much. Tough defense being played now by LaRonja. Number 64, Robert Remine, and also number four, LaMarcus White on the stop for LaRonja, bringing up third and nine for Independence. I tell you what, Jeff, this LaRonja defense, they're playing really well tonight. They're really playing a good, disciplined ball game tonight so far. We talked about it in the first half. Their defense played very good in the first half. They gave up two scores, but they still played good, and that, that's what's allowed them to get back in this game. They didn't get down by too many points. Well, Jeff, I think giving up 36 points last week to Franklinton, they felt they had something to prove tonight against this number one ranked Independence Tigers. Third and nine. Signorelli fakes the handoff, rolls left, feels the pressure, throws quickly. Good pass. Landry Richardson with a great catch. First down, Tigers at the 32-yard line. Good quick pass there by Signorelli. Had nice tight spiral on the pass and zipped it in there to Richardson for the first down. Well, Signorelli's at his best when he can roll out of the pocket, hitting number 21. Landry Richardson for the first down. The Ron who looked like they had too much cushion on their play. When you have third down and remains on your side, you got to play tight man coverage on that. The Ron just kind of 
Had a little too much little cushion there. Better pitch to pick up the first down. Seen it really on the quarterback keeper. He didn't get anything. Again, this is a Roger defense. What can you say about it? They're playing just as good as Independence's defense so far tonight. Well, one thing about LaRange today, I don't think I've seen a defensive penalty so far in this ball game on LaRange's side. They're playing a really well ball, ball game tonight Eight so one. far. Second and nine. They got one on the carry by Signorelli, but not much. And right now, you know, we talked about this game for Independence. This was the big test because next week they play Franklin's, and then the following week they travel up the road to Amy, and that's going to be a dog fight from the start. So this game, they needed a game like this to, to really get them into a you know, a competitive situation where they could make some plays. They're going deep downfield to Brister. It's incomplete overthrow, but again, Dustin Cedar really shows you he has the arm strength, airs it out to Brister, but he overthrew it, brings up uh, third down. Tonight's game brought to you by Pete's Pharmacy and Independence. Come by and see Pete and Peter Jr. for all your prescription needs. That's Pete's Pharmacy, 539 Railroad Avenue in Independence. Also, Sullivan land, land Surveying Company. If you need to get some land surveyed, I know someone who does call Don Sullivan today at 386-2999. 39 for the Tigers. They're in a tight ball game, 14 to 14. They've turned the ball over twice in this third quarter with 240 remaining. And the ball's right at the 32-yard line. Done in the backfield and a receiver to each side. Dr Signorelli drops back, throws. It's caught by Richardson out to about the 40-yard line as he gets out of bounds quickly. To number 21, Landry Richardson. Dustin Signorelli now is starting to open up the pass and even throw the ball. He's starting to throw it now. You're seeing him uh, throw a lot more in this third quarter than he did in the first half. Well, Coach Bagley knows in order to be successful against LaRondra, you're going to have to mix it up like they've done in previous weeks so far. LaRondra stepping up and playing some great defense tonight. Fourth down and Signorelli and the Tigers will have to punt. Back to return for LaRondra is number 23, Patrick Stevens. He's standing right at about the 22-yard line. A high, high punt by Signorelli. It'll bounce at about the 30, bounce way back, take an independence bounce, and will land right at the 28-yard line. So a good punt by Dustin Signorelli, 23-yard line. And the Wolves will have it. Now again, you see, I think now this game's going to go to a defensive game because it's switched on those two turnovers. You see a 14-14 score. Maybe you'll see more conservative offenses. Maybe you'll see them just explode. Who knows? I think you're going to see LaRange coming out shooting right now. They're going to try and put some points on the board very quick. That's where they've had their momentum going, trying to put it in real quick, having those quick strike plays. I expect them to kind of go downfield in a hurry. Well, Trey Willie's been advertised as the best passing quarterback in the area. We'll see if he can do it tonight in a tight game against the number one team in 3A. Willie in the shotgun, first and 10. They hand it on the draw play to White. He goes up the field, breaks tackles. He's across the 30, still on his feet, breaks another tackle. He's down the sideline. Look at LaMarcus White go. He's in the 30. He's dragged down shy of the 20-yard line. First down in LaMarcus White. Oh, my goodness. Good run by LaMarcus White. There's also a flag on a play. It could possibly be a 15-yard face mask right there. We'll have to wait and see what the call is. Wow, LaMarcus White broke that down the sideline. He looked like he was going all the way. Well, Jeff, right there on that play, let me go ahead and dissect it for you. What they did, they did a halfback counter around the right-hand side. LaRondra came out and spread the field with three wide receivers, spreading Independence's defense out. Picking up great blocking by, by the LaRondra offensive line as well. Picking up close to 40, 45 yards on the run by LaMarcus White. First down for the Wolves on an impressive explosion by LaMarcus White. He's been kind of quiet tonight, but right there he made up for it, broke a big run. And I tell you what, that could be the play of the game right there because, I mean, what else can you say? That was the big play on offense. That was definitely a big play by LaRange. It really is breaking the independent spirits. LaRange punches the ball in right now. That's three scores. Independence has not come back and scored from the first one. It's, it could get ugly. You can see the uh, sideline and the fans of LaRange, they're pumped up, man. I mean, this, is, this, this has been their third quarter. They've owned the third quarter tonight. Independence. We're at the two-minute mark in the third quarter. The Wolves have it at the 20-yard line. First down. Willie in the shotgun. He's got two running backs on each side, two receivers to the far side. This time they go back to a running back. 
It's number 22 on the carry, Walker, and he takes it up to about the 15 yard, five yards on that pop. Jeff, I don't know, but I gotta say, I am very impressed by Laranja last week. Coming off that launch last week to Franklin, and coming here to Independence's home, ranked number one in the state, it looks like Laranja's not even scattered at all to play this ball game. Well, they're not. I mean, they could have just said, well, you know, we're just not gonna be able to come back at halftime, but they fought back, they stripped the ball, they went for the turnovers, they got the turnovers, and they scored after they've recovered the turnover. So that's all you can ask for the Wolves. And right now, they've got all the momentum on their side. And they peel off a big run by LaMarcus White. That doesn't hurt. He'd been quiet all night. It helps out Willie. Second and five, Willie the shotgun. Two receiver to the far, one to the near. They hand it back to White. There he goes on the right side and gets to maybe one or two yards. Not much there. But I tell you what, LaRange has come out. And like you said, last week, I think they know they should have beat Franklinton. They feel they should have had that game, but they didn't. And tonight, they want to show they can play with anybody in the area. They've put on a tremendous performance no matter what happens in the final. You know LaRange is going to come in and play next in a ball game. They're five and one, so that means they're capable of playing with these good teams like Independence and AB. Third and four, ball is at the 18-yard line. And now Willie go under center with White in the backfield along with Stevens. He's got Sylvie to the near side. And number 10, that's Brent Willie to the far side. They pitch it to White. It's on the field. Fumble on the play. And now let's see who recovers. White couldn't hold on to it. Almost a costly pitch right there. Willie kind of pitching at it a little too high for LaMarcus White to handle it. Look. Fortunately, LaRange came up with the ball, bringing up a fourth down situation. We could be possibly looking at a field goal attempt no by no Ian Sylvie. Under 10 seconds left in the third quarter, and it'll go right down to the third quarter. So we head, we get ready to set, we get set to head into the fourth quarter, and 14-14 game, the Wolves have it at the 13-yard line. Wow, what a football game. These fans got their uh, money's out of this, money at worth, money's worth out of the ticket. Definitely, this is just a great ball game out here tonight. To see LaRanja come back and play like this uh, after being down by 14 points, it's just a good contribution to uh, you know what Tenshville Parish football is all about and what the South has to offer. Ladies and gentlemen, this game is brought to you by Byron Hall. We're getting ready to start the fourth quarter. Yeah, the game is tied up at 14-14. case you're just tuning people. in, Independence had a 14-0 lead at halftime, but LaRangers marched right back in. It's going to tie it up. It's 14-all, and LaRangers has fourth and three at the Independence 14-yard line. Ian Silva is going to attempt a field goal from about 30 yards out. We know he definitely has a leg for him. Let's just see if he does have the accuracy. Into the tip, the field goal, number five, Ian Silvey. The kick is blocked by Independence. The ball's gonna roll out of bounds. Big play by Independence right there, blocking that field goal to Kim. That was a big block by the Independence uh, specialty teams right there. They need to get the ball right here and drive it down the field. LaRange has had the ball for too long. The Independence defense has been on the field for way too long. And if uh, they can get a drive here, you know, they could do something with it. I mean, this, this second half has been nothing but LaRange. They need to hold the ball, drive the ball, and try to get them back into this ball game. Well, if Independence needed a big play, they needed it right there. 11.52 to go in this ball game. We're all knotted up at 14 apiece. That's right, Brett. Basically, that was one of the biggest plays Independence has seen right now is that block punt so far. First down, Independence. Signorelli on the center has two wide receivers split to each side. He's going give to give it to number two, Jarvis Dunn. He's going to fumble on the play. And let's see who has it. The Roger has the football. It looks like he just saw uh, the ball just squirted out right there. And uh, I mean, I, that's just shooting yourself in the foot one more time. That was a monstrous hit right there, but a LaRanja defensive play right there, drawing that ball loose from Jarvis Dunn. Right when you think Independence had something going, they give it right back to LaRanja, deep in their own territory. That's right, I mean, you get the ball right there. I mean, they've had the ball inside, uh, what, Independence is 30, three times in the second half, and I mean, you just can't win a ball game if you keep on giving, turning the ball over like that. Well, you can't, it's gonna bring up first and 10 for LaRanja, and we have an official's timeout. Okay, looks like we're ready to resume play. Trey Willie on the center. Has three wide receivers, two his left, one on his right. Pitches to number three. Number three. Turns it to Bias. He's trying to go around the left hand side. Springs free. And he's going to pick up the first down for the Roger Wolves. 
going down to the Independence 12 yard line, picking up close to 19 Eight. yards on a play. 16 on the play, first down for the Wolves. That's a big run for Laranja, a big run for Laranja. If, uh, if they can't stop them, you know, this, this this could be it for Independence. It looks like they're taking all the wind out of their sail, and it's out of the uh, stands here. All the fans, they're not they're not pumped up into this game. The sidelines, they're not into this game, and it could get ugly quick. Laranja definitely needs to put in the end zone right here. You're going to bring up first and 10 from the Independence 14-yard line. Troy Willis on the center, has two backs in the backfield. He's going to get the ball. He's going to hand it to number... 30, Ronaldo Weary on the play, picking up about Ronaldo one yard Weary. on the play, bringing up on second and nine for LaRanja. Three critical turnovers will be the name of the game in the final if the Tigers can't pull this out because they turned the ball over twice in the third quarter, once here in the fourth quarter. They just haven't been able to hold on to the football. Jeff, yeah, remember we set up the first play of the ball game, Independence turned it over in their territory to start the second half, and LaRanja capitalized on it. Let's see if they can do the same thing here in the fourth quarter. Second and eight, ball at the 11 yard line. They give it to White. He goes up the middle, fights his way to about the nine yard line, and a positive gain on the run. And you know, if, Inde if Independence can't hold the Roger here, and you're looking at a seven point difference, possibly a field goal if they can't punch into the end zone. I mean, they've, they've had the momentum the entire second half. The Roger Wolves have had the entire momentum on their side the second half. Now, you've got under 11 minutes remaining. If you're Coach Baglio Jr., what do you do here? Well, Jeff, you got to get your teams to step up right here. Then they rank number one in the state. They're ranked that way for a reason. They have to step up and play good defense right here to stop the Rogers momentum from trying to punch it in the end zone. Third and six, ball at the 10 yard line. Willie in the under center, pump face. Now steps up, throws in the corner of the end zone, and it's caught! Touched the incomplete. Oh my goodness. I got too excited. Excuse me. Incomplete pass to number five, Ian Sylvie. Good double coverage there by the Tigers. Brings up fourth down. So maybe the Tigers have stopped him and at least held him to a field goal attempt. That was a good run right there by Ian Sylvie. What I call the VNV out. Running an awesome right there. Thought he had it, but it dropped at the last second. Hey, that's, a, that's a lucky break for Independence by him dropping that ball. I mean, you know, you get in that close into the red zone, you got to score. You have to score to beat these Tigers. And, you know, if they don't make it right here, Independence got another chance. Ian Sylvie had the ball in both hands, but just couldn't hold on to it. They are very fortunate. Now they attempt the field goal. Sylvie will attempt it. This is a big, big play here in the fourth quarter. They fake. Now Willie rolls right, throws for the touchdown. It's incomplete. Two, LaMarcus White over his head, and wow! What do you call that? Good play right there by Independence. Looked like they may have been expecting a fake because they weren't full, because they were all all the Rogers receivers were covered. Absolutely a great play by Independence to step up right there in that situation. Right now, if you're Independence, I think you need to get your offense into this game. You need to drive the ball, and you need to get your, your team back into this game. They've been on their heels the whole time, and LaRond has just been taking it to them this whole second half. Well, if they want to score, they're going to have to go 90 yards on this drive. First and 10, Independence from their own nine-yard line. Gives it to Jarvis Dunn up the middle. He's going to be stopped by a host of LaRond defensive players, picking up close to maybe one yard on the play. On the carry. Tackle is by number 72, Donald Arsery on a play by Roger, bringing up second and nine for Independent. Second and nine, Signorelli pitches to Dunn. He goes on the left side, doesn't have a lot of blocking, fights his way to about the 15 yard line, flags on the play. Pick up the four. Looks like they had a clipping out there on that outside on that play. Flag on the play. Holding. Against the Tigers. Looks like we're going to have a hold against the Independence Tigers, right? When you think they got something going, they're just pushing themselves back, putting themselves in a deeper hole. It's going to bring up second down for Independence, and let's see how far they mark it off. It's going to be half the distance to the goal the line. So you're looking at second and 15. and 15 for the Independence Tigers from their own five yard line. Ball is now spotted. 
Independence is going to come into the line, second and 14 from their own five yard line. Signorelli's on the center, was done in the backfield. Two wide receivers split to his left and right. Signorelli drops back. It's going to be a handout to Jarvis Dunn. He's going to be met at the line of scrimmage by number 51, Jonathan James. Great stop by LaRange on that play. Bringing up third and 14 for Independent. Well, LaRange's defense is really stepping up this half. You know, I mean, being down by 14 points, they wasn't scared coming out into the second half. And they've really put it to the Independent's offense so far. I tell you what, Francis, it looks like Independence could be confused in the second half. They don't know what to do because I don't think they've been in a situation all year long. I, I totally agree. I think they're really caught on their heels right now. I mean, they need to drive this ball, but with uh, it's like 10 yards to go, 13 yards to go, it could be tough right now. Big play for the LaRanger defense. It looks like we're going to have another flag on the, pin on the field. Let's see what the call is. procedure against the Tigers. Mm -hmm. Half the distance to the goal. We had an illegal procedure right there against Independence backing them up at the distance to the goal. So you're looking at third and close to 15, 16 yards. Third and 17. This is definitely not the way to get your offense back into the, the game. Line. Penalty after penalty. It just doesn't help. Independence needs to pick it up right here. Signorelli's on the center, two backs in the back, but he's going to drop back the pass. He's going to pump fake. He's going to have, oh, great breakup of number 88. Chris Populous on LaRanger. Going down, Signorelli trying to go on downfield to hit his wide receiver, but a great play by the LaRanger defense, bringing up fourth down for the Independence Tigers. That was a great defensive play, great defensive stop by the uh, quarterback out there on that side. And uh, LaRanger's getting the ball with great field position. Again, you're getting the ball on Independence side of the field. You know, you just can't win a ball game by getting the ball on your side of the field the whole second half. Well, Signorelli's in his end zone, about seven yards, eight to nine yards deep in his end zone to punt this ball away. With 8.05 left to go in this ball game, we're all knotted up at 14. Signorelli punts it away. It's a wobbly punt. Signorelli's punt. It looks like it's going to bounce on at around down. the 38-yard line of Independence. Line. So about a 23-yard punt. Laron is going to have great field position with 7.58 left to go in this ball game. All tied up at 14. Right now, what I think LaRange is going to do, they're going to try to drive the ball. They're going to try to get some of this time off this clock. Because you don't, you don't want to score quick and then give Independence a chance to, uh, to score right back. So, I mean, you want to take as much time off the clock as possible you know, to keep Independence from getting the ball after you scored. Well, so far, the last two series, Independence has had to step up when they needed to, blocking the field goal and also disrupting that field goal attempt on the last series. This is another big chance for Independence to come through on defense. Willie's in the shotgun, two wide receivers to his right. He's going to roll. He looks like he wants to go somewhere. No, he's going to be nailed from behind by number 92 and also number 54, Rod Higginbotham, on a play. That was just relentless pursuit by the defense there. Independence, they need to get the ball back right here and keep them from, you know, driving the ball. And they need to uh, they need one to on the play, second and 11. Willie really trying to go downfield, trying to find a receiver, but couldn't find anyone. He tried to tuck it away and run. A great pursuit by the line. Independence defense on that play. Bringing up second and uh, second and 11 for LaRanger at their own 30, at Independence's 39-yard line. Looks like LaRanger lost a half of a yard on that play. Well, LaRanger's going to split four receivers to that left, a tight end to the right. Trey Willie's going to throw a wide receiver screen. Ian Sylvie going Willie downfield. Passes to Sylvie. And Sylvia would have looked downfield. He had number 10, Brent Willie, wide open, but electing to go to, to Trey Willie in the flat, but overthrowing about six yards. I, I, I don't know if a trick play is really going to do it here for you. You need to drive the ball. You need to keep that clock running. And I mean, you, you know, it's stopping the clock by doing those kind of trick plays. And I mean, LaRanja needs to punch the ball in here instead of just playing around with it. Absolutely. It's going to bring up third and 11 for LaRanja. At the Independence 39 yard line, you hear the fans get into it for the Independence Tigers. They need a big stop right here. The run is going to send four bar receivers to your left. Trey Willie's in a six yard shotgun. He calls for the ball. He's under pressure. He's going to be sacked. 
Ball number 68. Clarence Richardson for the Independence Tigers. Big sack right there by Independence. Another big defensive play by Independence. Their defense is really keeping them in the ball game. Turnovers is turning the ball back over to LaRanja, but the Independence defense is really coming through and stopping when they really need to. They just need to give the Independence offense a chance to drive the ball and put some points on the board. I'll tell you what, Francis, this is turning out to be one of the best ball games we've seen all year. This is definitely one of the better ball games we've seen all year. To see LaRanja come back like this, it, like, you know, it, it shows a lot to this ball club that they can come back from a 14-point deficit. We can see over deep to punt the ball away, and number two, Jarvis Dunn, deep to return it. Ace is going to punt it downfield. Takes a good LaRanja bounce. The ball's going to be out of about the Independence 26 yard line. Yeah, well now the time for Independence to drive the ball. Now they got the ball. They got decent. They got better field position than they had last time they had the ball. And I mean, if they can get a nice drive in, take some time off the clock, they can really get this game over with. As we know, Independence has turned the ball twice over the second half in their own territory. What they don't need right now is another turnover with 6.06 to go in this ball game. Cinderella's on the center, two backs in the backfield. Looks like he's going to do a quarterback keeper, trying to go up the middle, but he's going to be stuffed by number 30. Ronaldo Weary for the LaRondra Wolves. Cinderella picking up close to two yards on a play, bringing up second and eight for Independence. Independence is going to hand the ball at their own 28-yard line, bringing up second and eight. So he's really coming to the line of scrimmage. As receivers to his left and right, one back in the backfield. He's dropping back, a two-step drop. A great quick pass to number 21, Landry Richardson. Pick it up close to 10 yards on the play, picking up the first down for Independence. Independence really needed that first down. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was either the first or second first down of the, what, the second period, second half. And I mean, Independence really needs to drive ball, the ball right now and keep their defense, their defense off of the field because I know their defense has got to be blowing right now. They've been on the field the whole second half. I mean, this is a chance to really, you know, break this one open. Big series for Independence coming up. Sidney Rowe is going to come up the center. Independence going to have to add the own 41-yard line, two backs in the backfield. He's going to give it to. Gerald Williams on the play. He's going to be met at the line of scrimmage by three LaRanja defensive players, number 58, Nelson, number 72. Tonight's game is brought to you by Pete's Pharmacy and Independence. Come by and see Pete and Peter Jr. Armada for all your prescription needs. That's Pete's Pharmacy, 539 Railroad Avenue in Independence. From the 42 yard line. Also, Sullivan Land Surveying Company. If you need to get some land surveyed, call Don Sullivan at 386 2999 today. Independence is coming up to the line of scrimmage at their own 42 yard line, bringing up second and nine. Cinderella's on the center, two back to the backfield, two split ends to his right. He's going to roll out. He's looking for someone downfield, hitting. No, incomplete pass. Looks like Richardson had it, but dropped it. LaRange had some Independent. loose coverage, so Richardson was Independent open, but he dropped the ball. Richardson. It's going to bring up third, third and nine for Independence. And nine. This is going to be a big defensive stance right here for LaRange. 419 left to go in this ball game. We're coming from Independence, Louisiana. I'm Brett Luckett, Jeff Olchak, and Francis Scott bringing you the bringing you to play by play action. 419 left to go in this ball game. It's all knotted up at 14. Big third down right here. LaRanja definitely needs to stop Independence because Independence looks like they're trying to put something together right here on this drive. Cinderella's back. He's going to go around. Oh, come on a play. And we're going to see number 37, Ryan LeBlanc, falls on the ball right there. Almost another costly turnover right there for Independence. Fortunately, they fall on it, bringing a fourth down. Fourth and 21 from the 30-yard line. This has been a great ball game. This is unbelievable. This is one, definitely one of our best games that we've seen this year. And fortunately for us, Francis, we get to call the play, the game of the week Signorelli, every week. Signorelli's deep Patrick to punt. Stevens. And number 23, Patrick Stevens, deep to receive for the LaRanja Wolves. 
Good punt by Shannon Rally. Stevens is going to get out, get out the way. It's going to take an independence bounce going all the way back to the La Ronja 11 yard line. Let me tell you, that was a big time bounce for Independence. They really needed that. Every time La Ronja got the ball in the second half, it's been inside the Independence 40 yard line. They need to drive the ball, what, 90 something yards to, 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 you know, to score and it could be a long drive here. What you call in, in this game right now, 327 tie game, the Wolves have it. Uh, hey, it's their game to lose now. I mean, they can win it right here if they can milk the clock, go down, put a substantial drive together and cap it off with even a field goal. I mean, all you need is three points. You don't need a touchdown if you can milk the clock, but I know they're going to want a touchdown. I don't think this is the way Coach Bagley will plan it to be, but, you know, he knew this was going to be a tough game. He said last week when we interviewed him after the game against Pearl River that this was going to be a tough game. He realized this LaRondra offense was tough, so I think he expected a tough game. I don't think he expected it to go down this low, but what a hit there by Colby Payne and the Tiger defense. If anything right here, Jeff, LaRondra definitely needs to pick up the first down right here on this drive. If they don't pick up the first down, that's going to leave a little over two minutes for Independence to get the ball in great territory. It looks like Independence is starting to get a little bit of life into them, you know, and, and this is what, really what they need since this game was winding down. This and is going to be one of those games like they're going to find in the final of the playoffs where it goes down to the wire and whoever makes the big stop or the big turnover or the big score offensively wins the game, so they need to get used to this. And they sack Willie and bring him down to the end zone. And that should that's be, uh, be a, are we going to give two points on that or what? I don't know. It looks like they're going to calm down at the one-yard line. So LaRondra wow. gets a break right there. That would have been uh, something else to see go down to that. The defense is really stepping up. They're really bringing it now. And, I mean, it, it really looked like that he was in the end zone. It could have been a safety from here. It was close, but it looked like he was back for the uh, safety. But they're not going to give it to him. They're going to make him play this one out. Look, like you said a minute ago, Jeff, this is definitely playoff feeling football. It feels like playoff weather. And, I mean, both teams, they're definitely showing it here. Last week, the Tigers rolled over Pearl River, but they know that uh, their playoff games will not be like that. So they need to get used to these tight games where you have to stop make stops at the end of the game. We've got 227 officially left in the fourth quarter if you just joined us. Independence and LaRonger locked in at a 14-14 tie. And the Wolves have it back at the one yard line. I tell you what, this is football at its best. And uh, right now with 227 left, whoever makes the big play on either side is going to win this football game. Might go to overtime, who knows? Yeah, we haven't seen an overtime game yet, so I mean, this could be a it could be a new thing here. We thought we were going to get out of here early tonight, but it, we might not with this game. Might go no, to OT. We'll definitely be here a while, it seems like. Well, Jeff, give credit to the Independence defense coming out in the second half. They gave up two touchdowns, but I tell you what, in the last four series, the Rogers had it. Independence has stepped up and stopped them when it counted. 227 left in the game, 14-14 tie. Now the Wolves have it, third and 23. Can Trey Willie convert on a third and 23? He has the best arm in the land. And he throws deep downfield, and it's incomplete. To number 15, Clint Lee, he will not convert. Fourth down, and the Tigers will get the football back. They should pick up good field position as the uh, Wolves will punt deep in the end zone. Well, Clint Lee was double covered on that play, but a great pass right there by Trey Willie. It looked like Clint, Clint Lee could have had a, possibly had a shot at it. But unfortunately, it went through his hands and LeBron is gonna be forced to punt right here deep in their territory. Sylvie punts out of the end zone. He shakes the punt. He shakes it right up. And it's down. It's going to roll right at the eight-yard line. Oh, my goodness. That could be the determining factor in this game. Oh, my goodness. Ian Sylvie pulled that one. Jeff, Ian Sylvie has done an awesome job punting and kicking his whole game. But with 2.11 to go, when you're in your own, deep in your own territory, when you punt the ball, you've got to pin him deep. But fortunately for Independence, it went off the side of Sylvie's foot, only a seven-yard punt. Wow, the Tigers are uh, counting their prayers at this point as they're about to get the football at the 10-yard line with 2.11 left in the game and a 14-14 tie. Richardson in motion, Signorelli will take it up the middle, and he dives forward to about the six-yard line. So, I'll tell you what, the uh, Tigers dodged a bullet right there. The ball went off the side of Sylvie's foot, as you said, and just great field position. They can't ask for much more. They'll milk the clock and try to go in for the winning score.
Well, this was named the Game of the Week by Bill Hood Ford and all of our sponsors. And you know what? So far, it's been the Game of the Week. Oh, it's definitely the Game of the Week. This has been one of the better games we've seen all season so far. No doubt about it. Second and eight. Cigarelli under center. Two backs in the backfield. Two receivers to the near side. They give it to Dunn. He bounces it out to the left side. He dives in. Touchdown, Tigers. But hold on. Hold it. You've got a minute 30 remaining in the game. A lot of time left, folks. Minute 30. Minute 30. We'll see. The Wolves have a chance to counter this. Game's not over yet. But Independence goes up 20 to 14. Game's definitely not over. The way the Ron just played in the second half, they got a chance to drive the ball back and could tie it up. We could see, see overtime anyway. Plenty of time, folks. 1.30 remaining. The Tigers just scored on a seven-yard run by Jarvis Dunn. Now they'll attempt the critical extra point. This, this is where the extra points come in. Very critical. That's one thing. When you go in and uh, kick a, uh, a punt like that and you're that far into your end zone, you're just worried about catching the ball and not stepping on the end line. The last thing you you know in your mind is shanking the ball like that, and it's just a it's just a bad scene for the punter. Well, it's pressure, you know. It's called pressure, and when you get in a game like this, things don't always go the way you want to because you feel the heat. And uh, he he had a shallow punt, but his team still has a minute 30 left to go down the field. You know, with this pass ha pass happy offense of the Rogers, that's plenty of time for them to come down and match the Tigers on that score. <laughs> this is just an unbelievable game, you know, to see the Roger come back and, and, and tie it up. And now Independence is finally, you know, scoring on a play like that. It's just unbelievable. I think Independence has, has been shown their vulnerability tonight in certain positions. And, you know, they, that's going to help them because in the next two weeks, they take on a tough Franklinton club and then a very talented A meatball club. And those two games are key for this team. They want a state championship. They don't want anything less. And in order to get there, they've got to face two very, very good ball clubs coming up. But first, they have to get past the LaRanger Wolves. The Rogers definitely stepped it up, you know. Coming in here with a 5-1 and one record, Independence knew that they were they were in for a long night. I was talking to a couple coaches before the game, and, you know, they, they were really looking at this, uh, this the Roger quarterback. He's a really, really tough kid, and they knew that this was going to be a long game, and it's nowhere near over with, like you said a minute ago, Jeff. I'd like to run through our sponsors while we have a break. Ponchatoula Fitness Center, we'd like to thank them. They're a family-run organization and fitness center. If you'd like to get in with the family gym and get in shape, hey, stop by Ponchatoula Fitness at 1330 Highway 51 or call them on the phone at 386-8507. Also, Rabondo Builders, they've been building quality homes in the Florida parishes for over 20 years. If you want to build a house and you have some financial constraints, feel free to call Rabondo Builders today at 375-2077 and they'll work with you, 375-2077. And also, Chuck's Field of Dreams in the Times Square Shopping Center. I tell you what, Chuck has a great shop over there. He's got tons of wax packs, baseball, basketball, football, and all other types of programs, LSU memorabilia. We're back. And the Tigers are going to go for two. Signorelli on the sneak. And he takes it in. Oh, my goodness. 22 to 14. Now, you put the game into the hands of LaRanger because they have to come back scoring and convert a two-point conversion. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff. It just puts that much more pressure on LaRanger right there. If they could have held Independence from getting that two-point conversion, they would have had some, a good chance of possibly scoring and maybe winning this ball game. But now, not only did they need to score, but they need to go and march down for the two-point conversion as well. This has been a super, super ball game. We can't express to you in words how great this ball game has been, but it's been unbelievable. 22 to 14. The Tigers have the lead with 1.30 remaining. LaRondra has the football. They're going to have to score a touchdown and convert on a two-point conversion in order to tie this game and have a chance to go into overtime to win it. We'll see if they can do it. Don't touch anything. Just sit where you are or stand where you are and watch this game. It's terrific. Darnell Keith about ready to kick it off for the Tigers. Sylvie and White back to return for the Wolves. White will take it out to the 20. Cuts it back down to midfield. He's going to run laterally, and now he is dragged, but he's still on his feet, fights forward, and takes it down to about the 34-yard line. Good return by White, 121 left in the game, and the Wolves have it at the 34-yard line. Brought down by number 99, Lionel Singleton. Number 34, Brad Pine. Here we go. First and 10 for the Wolves. This is the game-winning drive, or at least the game time drive, if they want to go into OT and win this baby. We're at the 34-yard line. Willie under center. He's got two backs in the backfield. Drops back, has some time, steps up, throws. It is incomplete to Sylvie and broken up by number one, Chad Alexander. 
shy of the 40, but he got up to about the 42 on that catch. Spot down by number seven, Kenny Galador. Kenny Galador on the tackle for the Tigers. And under a minute remaining, the Wolves have it at around midfield, down by a 22 to 14 score. 22 to 14 deficit. I'm surprised right here, LaRonda just now calling timeout. They just wasted over 25 seconds right there. You think they if they were going to call a timeout, they should have called it right away. Valuable time lost right there. You're right. You have to make very good decisions at this point. And you said, said it beautifully. They lost 15, 20 seconds by just letting the clock run down. They're only at midfield. There's only 49 seconds left. They've got, you remember, they have to score a touchdown, plus they have to have time for a two-point conversion. Absolutely, right here, it's a big third down right here for LaRonja. He's got third and one, but like I said, Jeff, in the high school football, you pick up the first, you lose the chance, that stops the clock. 46 seconds remain in the ball game. Independence with a 22 to 14 lead, but the Wolves have it at the 44 yard line, or 43 yard line. They don't have much time. They've got to find a way to get the ball downfield and score, and then leave enough time in to attempt a two-point conversion to send this game to overtime. Can they do it? We'll see in the next few seconds. Jeff Hortrek, Brett Luckett, and Francis Scott bringing you the exciting, thrilling play-by-play -play here on FPTV's coverage of prep football. Like I said, Jeff, I'm not even a player. I'm just an announcer. Like I say, I'm nervous right now. If we're nervous, you know those players down there have to be nervous. This is an exciting ball game tonight right here in Independence, Louisiana. One thing I'm, I'm surprised at Jeff is that they have not put Trey Willie in a shotgun. It seems like tonight that's when he's been most effective is when he's been in that five to ten yard shotgun. The last three or four plays has been on the center. Quite interesting. Here we go, third and one. Willie under center, he hands it to, pitches it out to number three, that's Tobias, he's got a huge hole down the sideline, and he's on his feet still, and he's brought down shy of the 30-yard line, first down, LaRonger, what a play call, but hey, they picked up huge yards, they're down to the 30, 38 seconds left, they still have time, good clock management on that play, I guess they knew that Joseph Tobias was going to break that run. Well, absolutely a great play call right there. Joseph Tobias doing a halfback delay right there. Going, doing a little halfback counter going around the left-hand side, picking up close to 30 yards on the play. So that's a first down for the Wolves. 38 seconds left. They are down by eight points, 22 to 14. They have to score a touchdown, and they have to go for a two-point conversion in order to tie. That's the position that Independence put them in. Puts a lot of pressure on offense, but you know what? If you get to the playoffs, and both these teams have shots at the playoffs, the Independence definitely, and the Ronger as well, they're going to be in this situation again. Willie drops back, throws in the right corner down the field, and it's incomplete to number 10. Brent Willie brings up second and 10. 33 seconds left on the clock. Well, this is the ball game, second and 10, 33 seconds left. And like we said, they have, to, they have to score a touchdown in order to get to that position where they can go for the two-point conversion. Tigers put them in a tough situation, but you know what? This LaRondra team has the ability to do it. We'll see. Second and 10, Willie under center. He's motioning to his receivers. Now he has what, four receivers to his left side. Three of them in a line. They throw in the halfback pass to Sylvie. He rolls right, he's got time looking for someone open, throws it downfield, and there is Willie. He's got it at the 10. Still on his feet, dragged out of bounds at about the nine yard line. First down, 21 seconds left. What a call. What a call, my goodness. 21 seconds left to go in this ball game. This game is not over by a long shot. Sylvie trying to find Trey Willie going down the right hand side, finding him this time for about a 15-yard gain, bringing up first and 10 for LaRonja. This is going to be a big play right here for LaRonja. Unbelievable. The halfback pass, they tried it earlier, Brett. They didn't convert this time. They give it to Sylvie. He rolls right. The quarterback makes a great catch. I got to say, that's a gutsy call right there on the LaRonja coaching staff. Well, Jimmy Morris is one of the best coaches, a very, very intelligent coach, and he showed it on his last few play calls. First and 10, ball at the 10. Willie drops back, throws the end. It's caught by White! He's got it, he's down to the three. Timeout, they need to call a timeout. 14.7 seconds left. Timeout of the field, ball at the three yard line. This baby's not over, folks. Great, great pass right there by Trey Willie. Really threading it in right there between two defenders right there to number four, Marcus White, I believe, came up with the catch. Bringing up second and goal 
on the four yard line. It's going to be a huge play for LaRondra, but I tell you what, Jeff, one thing you got to look for here, Independence has stopped LaRondra in the last four series, last four times LaRondra's had the ball. So if, if Independence can come out with anything right now, they need to stop him right here. Well, the Wolves have, we, we thought they were going to run out of time, but evidently they knew how much time was on the clock. They managed it well. They had two plays. They've got 14 seconds left. They're at the three-yard line. If you score, it takes you two tries. You still have time to score the touchdown and go for that two-point conversion. You only need a few seconds to run that two-point. And if you get in, you got a tie game, and, and this game is not over. LaRonger has really come to play tonight. Like you said, I mean, the game was not over. I mean, they got the ball with under two minutes left, drove the ball down on two big plays, and, I mean, it really just shows what this uh, LaRonja ball club is all about. Here we go, second and goal. 14 seconds left in the game. 22 to 14 is your score. Independence with the lead, but the Wolves are threatening to score and send this game to overtime. Willie under center. He's got number 22 in the backfield. That is Walker. Three receivers on the far side, one of the near. Drops back, throws. Incomplete to the intended receiver, number four, LaMarcus White. Brings up third down and goal. Third and goal from the three. They only took two seconds off on that play. Well, they tried to go to the same play that just worked before, but the Independence doing a good job picking up that play, batting it down, bringing up third and goal for LaRonja. Brings up third and goal. 12.2 seconds officially left in the game clock. And I tell you what, they are ready to put this in. They're they coming right at the Independence defense. Ball's at the three-yard line. Willie under center. He's got Walker in the backfield. Throws to the left. End zone. Incomplete to Sylvie. No flag on the play. Chad Alexander was all over Sylvie. And boy, that was a questionable call there. That call could have went either way. The ref says there's other flag. It's going to bring a fourth and goal for LaRondra. 7.9 seconds left to go in this ball game. 22-14 Independence. This is the play of the game right here, Jeff. No doubt about it. This is it. Fourth down. If they don't score a touchdown, the game is officially over. 7.9 seconds. If they can score on this fourth down, they still have enough time for that two-point conversion to send it to OT. Wow, what a game. I mean, this has gone down to the final second. If I was the coach right here, Jeff, I'd go with been working the whole game. I'd put Willie in the shotgun right here. Maybe even have a chance for him to roll out and try and hit somebody in the corner end zone right here in this last play of the ball game. I might take Willie, like you said, roll him out and let him run it because uh, they're not expecting to run it. Willie has it. Last play of the game. Steps up, has time. He rolls right. Still can't find anybody. Throws it. It's caught! Touchdown! Call timeout! They're gonna run out of time! They scored the touchdown. It's 20 to 22, but they'll still let him go with the two-point conversion. Oh my goodness! I know you're biting your fingernails right now. You probably have no nails left, but you know what? We have nails left. And we're sitting here watching a 22 to 20 game. I mean, this is this is the best game you can see. You can't ask for anything more. This could right here be the last play of the ball game. Looks like LaRonja is going to take a timeout, go to the sideline, think about the play they're going to run, because Jeff, whatever play they call right here, it's going to be big. Trey Willie was advertised as the stud quarterback in the Florida Parishes. You know what? He lo he's looked like the stud. He's played poised. That was a big time play, and he made the touchdown, converted, and he's kept his team in the game. Yeah, I'd have to say, coming into Independence, coming into this in this crowd, coming into this stadium, it is really tough to come back on a team like this. To be down 14 points, to come back after being down, and now tying it up, well, close to tying it up, 22-20, with no time left on the clock. It, uh, this is just an unbelievable game. It's definitely one of the best games of the week. Number 15, Clint Lee in on the, uh, caught that reception, caught that touchdown for LaRonja. Here we go, a lot of the LaRonja team just on the sideline, just talking right now, just saying, hey, you know, we, they're designing their play right here. This is it, this is the ball game. They've got to score in the two point conversion. If they do score, folks, don't get up. Like we said, sit down and keep biting your fingernails if you have any left because we're gonna go to overtime. 22 to 20, your score. No time left on the clock. Tigers up by two, but the Wolves are going for the potential game tying two point conversion. Here we go, fasten the seat belts, hold your hat down. And now, what are they doing? Setting up for an extra point? I mean, this doesn't make sense. They kick the extra point, and they still lose the game. You gotta go for two. I don't understand this at all, but maybe it's a trick play. I don't know. Maybe they're tricking up. I don't understand it. Don't understand it one bit. And 
Willie now steps up. They did try to trick him. He throws. He's got Sylvie. He's on his feet. He's dropped, and that is the ball game. Independence rushes the field, 22 to 20. The Tigers over the Wolves. What of you, the winning coach after the game? You got us on FPTV Channel 17. The last one, 20. I'm Jeff Forchek, joined by victorious head coach Charles Baglio, Jr. Coach Baglio, tonight you had your hands full with the LaRanger team. Uh, talk a little bit about the game and how your team came together and pulled it out in the end. Well, first of all, you know, we let them back in the game. We got them 14 nothing down, and we turned the ball over twice on offense, and uh, they scored down there and, and tied it up. And then our defense really took over in the, in the late in the third quarter and the fourth quarter and stopped, stopped several of their drives because we couldn't get anything going offensively. But uh, I'll tell you what, whenever Independence and LaRanger play, you got to expect something like this. And LaRanger had their backs against the wall because they got beat last week. And two losses in this district is really tough to overcome. So uh, we knew they'd, they'd come out fine, but we just couldn't get the kids to realize it. Well, you were up 14 to nothing at halftime. looked like you were in control. And all of a sudden, you have two quick turnovers in that third quarter, which really got their crowd into it, got them into it. And then all of a sudden, they scored two touchdowns. you got to tie a game. Yeah, that's right. And that's why this is high school football. That, the emotions take over. And uh, whenever you turn it over, that's the biggest thing that happens to you. You lose emotion, and they gain emotion. So I was real pleased with our kids. All right. You know, to come back and stop the two-point conversion and uh, and win the game, that was a big thing, win the game. You think you need games like this to get you prepared for Amy and Franklinton and then the playoffs because you know you're going to face teams like this where the games might go down to the wire like this in the playoffs. You're going to have to be ready for it. I don't need any games like this. <laughs> Those kids might can use a few, but I don't need any more like this. I've had my share. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, in the long run, it'll, it'll teach us that we can't ever let up, you know, and uh, I'm just pre pleased with the win. Congratulations, 7-0, and Thank keep you. that number one ranking. Thank you. Joined now by Brett Luckett, the uh, color commentary guy here. Brett, I mean, this game was uh, unbelievable. It went down to the wire. People got their money's worth. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff, not only was this game of the week, but this was pretty much game of the year. Looked like Independence had a momentum going into the second half, but LaRonger forced a couple early turnovers. It, it tied up at 14, but in the end, Independence, the number one team in 3A, able to pull this one off. Remember, Amy has to play Independence in two weeks, so that's going to be a big game. If it goes down to the wire like this, we're in for a terrific ball game. Tonight, final score, Independence 22-20 to over the LaRonger Wolves. For Jeff, for Brett Luckett, I'm Jeff Warcheck and Francis Scott. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next week.